It's time for Twig This Week at Google. Jeff Jarvis is back from Vidcom. He'll have a report. Stacy Higginbotham is here. She's going to get her brand new Echo Home. We'll set ours up here. We'll set hers up there. We'll be talking to each other. A little demo and a lot more coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 411. This is the 411 on Google for Wednesday, June 28th, 2017. Dinah, won't you blow? This Week in Google is brought to you by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. See what's on the menu this week and get three meals free with your first purchase and free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twig. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. You can apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash twig. It's time for Twig this week in Google, the show where we talk about, well, I think today we'll be talking about Google a little bit and other things. Jeff Jarvis is here. Actually, he's at his office. You're at work. You're back to work. Back to work. So I'm, I'm in New York because tonight I go and tape uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast. Oh! <gasps> podcast timing you. Excuse me. Pardon me. What are you doing hanging out with us, Jeff? Yeah, slumming, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's fun. always a lot of fun. That'll be great. He's a professor of journalism at CUNY. That's where his office is. That's why he's got newspapers in the office. Also with us, uh, our good friend and co-host, Stacey Higginbotham from the Stacey on IoT show at IOTpodcast.com. And her blog where she writes all about IoT, Stacey on IoT. What does that mean? It's a signal. What? Did she do? It's never open. What's open? The oh, door. the door is open. I'm so, I didn't even think about that. Um, it's only open. My <laughs> daughter's not here. here. So. <laughs> it does kind of like, like poltergeist in that room behind you. It's so bright. It's, it's <sighs> because it's my hallway and it's They're a big window. Here. Would, you, would you like Hot me to shut the door? No, I like it. Inside the house. They're inside the house. So, uh, yes. as we speak, there's a massive, um, malware epidemic spreading throughout Europe uh, and elsewhere. Uh, a new quasi-ransomware uh, called Petya. Do you know uh, there's also something called not Petya? Yes, and sort of Petya. There's three. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is too much for me. Uh, this is, get ready, because this is the new world order. And we'll, we'll, I, I just want to say we're aware of it. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. Um, but I think since Jeff's here and, and he hasn't been here and I haven't been here, I think we need to get a little rant going. Uh-oh. So we're uh -oh. going to start with uh -oh. the largest fine the uh, EU has ever levied, 2.42 billion euros. 2.7 billion dollars. To Google because it uh, pushed, it according to the EU, search results towards frugal its shopping engine or the thing formerly known as frugal frugal doesn't even exist anymore no it doesn't exist and i you know i'm not as you know i've criticized google for getting into businesses that uh, you know a, a search giant shouldn't get into like youtube like content but i never felt like they they preferred their no. shopping engine well they 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 do in the sense that those are ads and they sell those ads and those ads appear atop the page and that's the way the business works. Um, How, but, your article in politico.eu going right into the lion's den is, has exactly the right headline. 2.4 billion euros for Google shopping? Really? That was them. They did, that was a good headline. I like it. But then you point out that this really probably has less to do with shopping and more to do with European companies that compete with Google, like Axel Springer, in advertising. Right. Uh, well, you know, I start here. So I use every possible Google product there is, except for this Macintosh, which doesn't work. And, um, <laughs> if Google would only make a computer. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, one that Microsoft would respect to put Skype on, but that's not always true. <laughs> uh, so I use every Google product there is, but I have no sense of ever using Google Shopping. I used to use Frugal. Frugal died. I I don't use it. Frugal wasn't and, a shopping site. It was a search engine. It's a search engine for shopping comparison, right. Uh, but so there is Google that, Shopping now, and I've never used it either. In fact, I, if you I type in shoes. If you type in shoes on Google Shopping or just in general, let's just do it in general. In general, type in shoes. You will get ads atop the page that are Google placed ads, like every possible other kind. Oh, you don't even get that. Weird. Well, let me log out. Let me do an incognito uh, window because you know when you're logged in, it knows you don't wear shoes. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Um, Why well, would it not give you shoes, Stacy? Does it give you a shoe bar if you if you if I type shoes into Google? I just type shoes to search. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Hold on. No, I don't. The... I don't get it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I wait get... a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the ad. It's not a bar though. I get an ad. I didn't get it. I get an ad for Zappos, which is Amazon. Oh no, I didn't get that today. No, so what, what you normally get is a little. Oh, maybe they took it down. <gasps> Uh, what if no, I click the shopping tab? Up. Let's let me click the mine. shopping. Here's the shopping tab. But this is is oh, this? No, you type in phones. Type in phones. Okay. Phones. Okay. Let me I'm go telling back you, to... my shoes worked. Oh, did okay because you're you got yeah, a you're, bar. You're, you're, oh, here's the bar you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So you get oh, that bar. Oh, but if I type in phones, I don't get a bar. <laughs> oh, that's so sexist. <laughs> Dang. She gets shoes well, but actually, no phones. So Google this says sponsored. I, I mean, it says sponsored. It's ads. Yes, they point to that. Yes. And and no, they don't point to competitors uh, as much as the competitors wish. And yes, Yelp complains. Um, but um, I don't see any problem with this. Uh, and, and, and in any case, it's probably worth more than the shopping service is worth, the fine is. And um, But as I say in the piece, it's not really about that. So the publishers went, used all their political clout to go after, and this is Springer and News Corp., and others, and to go after uh, regulators, to go after Google. And it's been a seven-year process, I think three or four uh, aborted efforts to settle. Uh, and Google was ready to settle, ready to change behavior, but then the politicians kept getting more pressure. No, make them hurt, make them hurt more, don't settle. And the politicians did. And so now we have this, this huge uh, find uh, to be levied against Google. And, and, and no matter what, it ends up being, it means that the regulators are going to be up Google's rear end for years um, and all over this shopping thing, which makes no sense. Which and, is and ironic. By the way, yeah. In shopping, there is a lot of competition from a company called Amazon, which Stacey will be getting to later. Um, right? And, and, and so, you know, I use Amazon to shop. I don't use Google to shop. Google is not paramount in shopping. Um, but that's the way it is. So, so, yeah, so Google says we're going to appeal. We disagree with the result, but where do yeah. they appeal? They appeal to the courts in the EU, right? Which, yeah, uh -huh. same, same folks who gave us the right to be forgotten. Um, yeah, there's been some bad decisions today. There's one in Canada too. We'll get to later. This is, this is, you know, Eric Schmidt has always said when you're, when you represent, you're the biggest thing on this disruptive behemoth called the internet. Yeah. You're going to be the target, but boy, are they the target on this one? So they, what, this, this is the story that is continuous in uh, technology. And, and we've always known that the incumbents would fight tooth and nail against disintermediation yes. by Internet, the Internet in, in general and Internet companies specifically. And so that's what you say this is really. But does, uh, there is a legitimate point to be made, and I've made it about YouTube, that when Google is in a business like content – that muddies the waters with their search. I've always said Google should be above the fray. They sh I know they have the right as a business to pursue profit in any way they see fit. But I feel like if you're kind of the, you should be like almost a priesthood if you're in charge of search and completely, completely agnostic and independent. And well, let's, having let's properties, having properties like content properties muddies the waters unnecessarily. Yeah, yes, and I, and, and I can agree with that. Let, let me make two points. One, Google's not just a search company anymore. It is, though, though a lot of advertising comes from there. Advertising comes, that revenue comes from all kinds of other I places. know, and I guess it's foolish it's of me to say, company. but I wish they were just a search company. But this is like but this is like the EU going after Microsoft. They're fighting yesterday's war. Um, uh, what was my second Google one? is not a monopoly here in the U.S., people are pointing out. There is competition in the U.S., but in Germany, uh, in Europe, they're about 80%, 90% market share. They're very... 
they are effectively a monopoly in search. Uh, but again, and they're arguing this is a search thing. The truth is, if, if, if you were, if I, not to give them any ideas, but if I were an antitrust person and I wanted to go after Google, the one area where they are vulnerable is advertising. Yeah. They have a huge, yeah. huge market share in advertising. There's another thing, I'll give up a number right now. There's another thing on the on the rundown that says that Google and Facebook together now have more ads than every newspaper and magazine combined in the world. Um, uh, so there's it's a duopoly and there's huge pressure there. And I've long said that where Google where Google is most vulnerable, and this is perhaps what's coming back to bite them in a slightly indirect way, where they're most vulnerable is that they have the power of God over businesses. And if a, if a, if a link farm comes in and, and, and Google says, you're a bad link farm, and next to it is a good directory, and Google gets rid of both of them because they look similar and one actually has editorial value and one doesn't, Google makes that decision solely. And I've argued for years that Google ought to appoint a jury of advertising peers uh, to take some of the pressure off of them. Well, in a sense, what happened here is Yelp has been yelping about Google for years uh, and other small shopping search engines that just don't compete with Google because it's not as good and, 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 and they don't have the reach and they're not going to rise up and they're not going to get the same money. But they, they, they are complaining and Google has power over them and no cover to hide behind. Well, and, and but I, that's by the way, and as I said, with content, I have the same problem because I'm a competitor with Google's YouTube. And if and if you search for tech news and you get a lot of YouTube links, but you don't get Twit links, that's also Google using its power at, to harm me. But of course, their answer would be unlike unlike the shopping. Their answer would be you can be on YouTube for free, and we'll and we'll give you money. Yeah, but that's not the answer I want. That means yeah, you live on our farm. And mm -hmm. uh, and give us your proceeds, and we'll give you a share of those. Is not this is not the right answer? That so, Stacey, what I, do you think? I'm sympathetic to the EU. I I feel like it, this is a case where they're just wrong. The, what they're complaining about is the ad bar. Google sells ads. I mean, that's the and so they, does and every they, media company. And they yeah, and they favor. The ads favor the people who pay for the ads. That's the way it works. If you go to if you go to Actual Springer's Built, the largest paper in Europe, and you search for shoes there, you get the Built Shoe Shop, and you get Built's shoe advertising. So they're not. You so don't get Built competitors. The EU is not complaining that search results are modified. Tell me if this is the case. They're not complaining that search results are modified. They're complaining about the ad bar. Well, no, I think they are complaining. They're complaining that, that it confuses people. Correct. Like if I search I for shoes on Google. It is possible that I would not see the word sponsored, and I might not understand the relationship there. I think that's I think what the complaint's more, about. There's more right? allegations. I read the stories. I didn't get to read the the um, full complaint. There's there, no. I think there's other allegations that they they nefariously um, um, don't. Pr but it's, it's it's not it's not a, it's it's a, it's a negative. You're proving a negative. They don't promote the competitors as much as they otherwise should or would. It's a real hard thing to prove. I think. Stacey, what do you think? I'm, I'm, I've monopolized. Speaking no, of monopolized. and on this, on this, yes, I have very, I have no opinions. I mean, my opinions oh, are the common person. I really don't. Pshaw. No, I really don't. This is, this is that advertising. I have, I have opinions about Boring monopoly opinions. power in other industries, but this is not an industry yeah. I know a lot about. I think we'd all agree, antitrust laws are a good thing. They, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I think we're in this country, we're in favor of free markets. We don't perhaps have the suspicion of big companies they have in Europe, but we're in favor of free markets and private enterprise. And the one play, one of the places where free markets fail is when one company gains so much dominance that they can use their dominance in one market to uh, block competitors in other markets and, and in effect expand their dominance. And we've, it's always been held in this country that that is illegal, that is mono that is misusing, it's not illegal to be a monopoly, it's, mis it's illegal to misuse your monopoly power. We've, all, we've for a long time had antitrust regulations. So I think we all agree on that. The question is, is Google using its effective monopoly in search in Europe to establish a foothold in another business? This is, this is what uh, uh, Margareta Vestager, the um, commissioner in charge of uh, privacy, this is her quote in charge of competition policy said, Google has come up with many innovative products and services that have made a difference to our lives. That's a good thing. But Google's strategy for its comparison shopping service wasn't just about attracting customers by making its product better than those of its rivals. Instead, 
Google abused its market dominance as a search engine by promoting its own comparison shopping service in its search results and demoting those of competitors. What Google's done is illegal under EU antitrust rules. It and this is this is where you know I, I can't disagree with this sentiment. It denied other companies the chance to compete on the merits and to innovate. And most importantly, it denied European consumers a genuine choice of services and the full benefits of innovation. That's what antitrust is about. And so... if it's her opinion and the opinion of the EU that that's what Google did, then I understand this this decision. I guess There's the debate problems. now is whether Google did that. Right. So it, listening to that, it seems actually kind of interesting because it's it's talking about some of the issues that we have. It's the same issues people have with things like data aggregation and how in today's world, the more both networks affect you, network effects, the greater your network effects, the greater the amount of data you can bring in from your users, that's going to have a real competitive differentiator and advantage over competitors over time. And that gap is only going to get wider. And that actually, we've talked about this before with kind of like, how do you think about antitrust in an era where everything is, oh, digital and maybe a lot of things are free. So I don't and, know. That, and, I mean, and it's global markets. And that's, so this Canadian decision is interesting because- whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, but I'm just saying Google is a, is a difficult challenge because it's, very difficult. it's a monopoly in Germany. It's not a monopoly in the U.S. Uh, and yet Google, uh, by this Canadian decision, will be required to change its search results globally. Which so, is horrendous to free speech. Horrendous. So um, this is, you know, I, I think that Scary even Marguerite, Marguerite Vestager would say this is very difficult, challenging to decide what to do. Uh, but this is what we've decided to do, I'm sure, what she would say. Let me uh, make a couple of points about, about the EU decision. One, uh, we need to point out that antitrust law is different in the U.S. than Europe. Here, it's about protecting consumers. There, it's more about, uh, I'll, I'll get com complaints about saying this wrong, but more about protecting companies, protecting the market. Yeah, that's kind of what her statement said. We want to make and sure. it's bigger than the market's problem. But, so, so, but I, don't, I see no consumer harm here. The problem becomes, <laughs> and I, I don't know how to say this well, it's a tautological problem is basically she's saying that, um, that if they can't compete on their merits. Well, you've got to prove the negative that if Google didn't have a shopping service, what they, would they be? But of course, Google is going to have shopping ads. So what does the world look like without Google? And is that what the definition of fair is? But with Google, well, Google has better services. You know, and this is the irony of the Microsoft case. Uh, Microsoft's going to force its browser down everybody. Well, no, somebody came along with a better browser, and it didn't happen that way. And if Google has a better shopping service and better listings for shoes and better advertising opportunities for those advertisers, then it does deserve to win in the market and with the consumer. Um, wait, wait, and, okay, And how do you Stop. prove that it's undue uh, influence on that? It, that's the tautological problem. Go ahead, Stacey. So this actually gets kind of to some of the arguments we make about network neutrality. And don't hate me for saying this, but there you're also trying to prove a negative in the sense that True. if ISPs get involved, they're going to cause harm. And I would say that a focus on the consumer isn't actually the right way to go necessarily because consumers in some cases can win. Like if you think about, well, I'm not even going to bring that up because that's super controversial, but you really should be optimizing as a government for competition because the understanding is competition is going to be inherently better. But if you go that route, then you have to look at the nature of competition and how it changes based on technology, based on user habits, based on all of this stuff. And I think it is a tautological, tata, I can never say these words. Uh, tautological. Tautological argument. Epidemiology. Uh, <laughs> Epistemology. <laughs> I can say other hard words. Ontology. <laughs> Uh, but I think there's that's just a philosophical difference people are going to have, and I think that's a fine argument to be happening. Honestly. So, so Stacey, I think it's really necessary stay on that. Right now. Sure. So, so, so that notion of if it's just about you must have competition. Um, well, no. Mon again, monopolies aren't illegal if you have the best product and everybody loves it. Um, that's not illegal. Then, just using that's not illegal. Not, at so least not in the U.S. Although I, I think we should. It's but a good it point that the European have, rules are different. So. But culturally, it could have whatever. a competitive impact, though. That's that's what's really interesting today, that's because the, the more people. 
That's why the U.S. standard, I think, is a better standard because you have to look at harm. Right, but well, and, 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 and I don't think anybody's uh, suggested that, that, that Google should be uh, prosecuted in the U.S. for this, right? This is not... No, nobody's investigating Google. There was there was an investigation. There, the was, FTC documents was, were leaked, right? But but I think it was a proper decision in the U.S. not to do it. Right now, this is where this is where then people pull out. Look at how often Google uh, people went into the White House during the Obama administration. Aha, see. Right. But I think that that pales given current Russian activities. Um, I'm not getting political. I'm just comparing. Uh, uh, but 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 yeah, this notion that competition for its own sake. Then then then, Stacey, what it also leads to is, and this is what I get all the time from Europeans. I I, I got flustered with a BBC interview earlier today because I just well, isn't it time that somebody just does something? Show me the statute that defines too big. And in essence, what you get to here is you say, ah, if you get too big, that alone is a sin. We're not going to tell you what too big is. Well, you get that's your assertion. That's not what their law I says. I, I think that's we're what getting you think it means. I mean, that's, the that's EU what would say the, uh, say about this. Shouldn't somebody go after them because they're yeah, too yeah. big? Yeah, yeah. But really, what the EU rules are is monopolistic behavior. I'm reading from Ben Thompson's very art, good article in Stratechery. Monopolistic behavior is presumed to be illegal if it restricts competitors, which in the long run theoretically hurts consumers. But as you point out, it's really about other businesses. Dominant companies have a special re responsibility in the EU not to abuse their market position by restricting competition, either in the market in which they're dominant, that's a different, by the way, from the U.S., or in right. separate markets. Otherwise, there'd be a risk that a company once dominant in one market, even if this resulted from competing on the merits, would be able to use this market power to further expand its dominance or leverage it into separate markets. Ben points out that part of the problem is what is a monopoly in the digital era? Yeah. Um, right. And that's where I think we, that's where I think this is actually good because we're having a conversation about what it means to be too big right I mean, now. Yeah, because it, you a, could, is is it a monopoly when you can just say, instead of typing google.com, bing.com? Or uh, duck, duck, admittedly go. most Or DuckDuckGo. Admittedly, most people don't, but that but they're making a, a an economic choice and have the right to make that choice. So in other words, Google is winning on its merits. It's not like there's a barrier to entry or is there? So I think where well, this gets more interesting. With Amazon. Oh. I'm sorry, Stacey. I, oh, I, was just, I, I think this gets interesting when we start looking at companies like, we'll say, I don't know if Jeff is going this way, but Amazon or Google with like machine learning and improving their services. So when you but now you want go into them to Google, do that, right? I, you shouldn't hold that, on, hold on. You don't want to create a chilling effect. Where, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying you don't want to create a chilling effect where they don't want to innovate because they yeah. would come up against the shoals of any competitive. Thing right. Well, and that's true. And that's why this this is a good conversation because we have to talk about that and we have to understand. I think that's what. And the way regulators do this is through laws and through the courts and through these kind of conversations. And we're going to see how badly this works out or what right. happens. Okay, and you could so, say this is the first beginning of the conversation. Well, okay. now I, I think will that's appeal. what this is. Yeah. And I think so, that's okay, worth... Stacey, let's, let's, let, let, me, let, me, let me stipulate, Your Honor, that the conversation is a fine thing to have. Okay, We're going to call this show Judge Stacy from now on. Yes. Yeah, I like that. I'm like, Stacy gets yelled at by Jeff. Good Lord. <laughs> no, she's not yelling Don't at you. Yell at you. I, no, I, I, feel like, I feel like a student in the classroom. I'm like, oh, Jeff. No, it's Judge no, Stacy. I'm, I'm, he's, I'm, I'm he's, stipulating I'm agreeing with you, yes. right? So let's say the conversation is good. However, um, $2.7 billion for this Fakakta little shopping thing, the, the, yeah. the political effort to try to do a huge boom on Google for what is a minor part of Google where there is minor harm, if any, um, that's not the way to have the conversation. Uh, this that is a political act, not a regulatory I, yes. act. It's a political act. And it was started by publishers who were acting politically, who were using, in my mind, journalistic value, perhaps improperly, to you to get a forced government to 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 regulate against to protect against their new competitors. All right, I'm going to channel. It's not being done here. I'm going to channel Marguerite Vesta here, even though I can't pronounce her name. I'm going to channel her. This is what the uh, European Commission's fact sheet says in this regard. Uh, we mentioned, uh, yeah, you may have a monopoly, but that's because consumers choose you. They could easily. There's very little barrier to them using DuckDuckGo. 
Uh, they say there are also high barriers to entries in these markets in part because of network effects. The more consumers use a search engine, the more attractive it becomes to advertisers. So they're kind of, I think, admitting, Jeff, what you are suggesting. The profits generated can then be used to attract even more consumers. Similarly, the data a search engine gathers about consumers can in, in turn be used to improve results. They're saying there's a virtuous circle here that Google's taking advantage of to make it even more strong and more Indeed, powerful. Indeed, virtuous for those consumers. Those consumers get a very free, get a free, a very good service. Well, it's virtuous that is free for, for and Google, it is and it's not well, quite so virtuous if hey, you're Alex Springer or Rupert Murdoch. Well, then change your damn business. Don't so, keep on track. Well, I think your well, point well is that they don't. That it's Murdoch and Alex Springer that don't want to compete on the merits. Google's yes. winning on the merits. Yes. Go Let's ahead, change this a little bit though, because. This is about advertising, which strong feelings, um, publishers, strong feelings. But the same virtuous cycles that based on network effects is going to happen in services based on artificial intelligence. Yep. So the more data you have. So like think about car companies and uh, even your like photo services on Google. So when you start to look at it that way, then you're. Oh my gosh, guys! I'm on this new medication, and it's making my brain stupid. Oh, can I have I some of that? I'll have what she's no. having. <laughs> like, oh. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to come back to that. But the no. idea here yeah. is that you're going to be better as a business the more information exactly. you suck in. Yes, that's it, true. And that's exactly why this clause is problematic in the internet era, because. You, you know, from the point of view of creating great companies, and by the way, a great company like Google benefits consumers, you want to encourage this virtuous circle. And for the EU to say, well, we can't allow that to happen because it becomes a flywheel that you can't stop. We've got to stick a stick into it so that other people get a chance to create their own virtuous cycle. Well, well not, even, not even they get to Oh, wait, wait, I remembered my point. Hold on. Go ahead. Let's okay, stay you see, first. Let's Before stay we lose it. negative. The drugs have kicked okay, in. Okay, yes. The drugs kicked in. Think about something like facial recognition. If you're Facebook right now, you have the data to do amazing facial recognition, amazing people recognition. Now imagine that being used for something nefarious and everyone's still on Facebook. There's no, when those things start happening, consumers will want to move, but they won't necessarily have that choice because the network effects and benefits will have accrued too much Facebook. to those main companies. We're seeing right, that now. Yeah, you see so it on Facebook. That's certainly. that's the flip side of this argument when it's not yeah. something nice that we want. This is the uh, graph the that the uh, the EU decided to include in their PDF of this decision. By the way, immediately be discredited because it comes from Stat Counter. Jesus. Uh, which shows what morons they are, but it does show uh, almost hundred percent. The red line at the top. Here, let me telestrate. Is this is Google? This is everybody else at the bottom. Well, you know that that's really a symbol for just just, just change the label of this to advertising. Yeah, but they even admit that because it attracts advertisers, the profits generate yeah. can attract more consumers. They admit that that's the part of the virtuous circle. But what they're saying is Google is completely completely dominant based on stat counter. But again, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. The, 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 the question is, what did they do wrong? Let me make two points, Leo. Dominant company says the EU have a special responsibility not to abuse their market position. And, and, and prove the abuse. I don't see the abuse. Two points. One, you said earlier that, that they want to put the, put the stick in the flywheel to enable others to create. That's not what's happening here. They're putting the stick in the, uh, in the flywheel to protect existing companies against Google's creation. It's protection. I don't think... I don't think motivations, I know we can argue about if motivations matter, but in general, it's the results that matter in these things. And so I will agree with you that their motivations may stink, but the results are, is we're going to start having this conversation. Also, that fine hopefully will be whittled down. I don't know. I'm like, eh, I don't well, care. Don't, don't you That's worry that this is going to have a chilling effect on companies because, look, this is what a company's trying to create is this flywheel yeah. so, effect so, where yeah. there's benefit to the company and the company grows bigger because of the benefit to the company. That flywheel scares a lot of people. 
I mean, if well, you think about how us. we're reacting. It's the market. Yeah. We're saying Google's getting too big. That's what we're saying is, and Amazon, same thing. They've got the data, which the data helps them do this. Which, I, But uh, at the same time, don't we, there is a market benefit. There is, and it bothers me in two ways. It bothers me for Europe, which is the point I make in the, in, in the op-ed, that this is no way to attract investment and innovation to Europe. This is no way to say that we're going to work in Europe. It's going to create it's going to create a chill. And, and they keep on saying, we want our own Google. Well, the only way you're going to get your own damn Google is if you invest and risk. Second point, even outside of Google. So I, I got into an argument on Twitter, as often happens in these cases, with a guy named Jason Kent, who is the head of the horribly named Digital Content Next, which is a trade association for major publishers in the U.S. And... Um, you know, you're defending Jar Jarvis. You're defending Google and Facebook, and you know, and, and and he's he's echoing the EU line. The problem I have with that, with publishers echo the EU line, and this is going to happen the same thing when we get to GDPR and privacy, is to my mind the salvation of the mass media of the next generation of mass media publishing and journalism is relevance and value, is knowing people as individuals, is having data on them. Uh oh data on them. So right. now data is being knowledge about people to build relationships of relevance and value is being demonized in this decision and across. And if the publishers take too strong a stance that to have any data, to know anybody as an individual is bad, they're cutting off their nose and other appendages. They're cutting off their future. And they're and and, and they're doing themselves well, much like the music industry system. in the face of Napster. Their goal is to preserve as incumbents the, st the status quo. Yes. And there's no bigger threat to the status quo than the Internet and Google and this new way of doing things. But now and, you have regulators and corporations. But you can't gang turn the up. clock back. The they're regulators can well, do, do They can do everything they want. They're trying to stop want, the clock. But, gonna, but they're they trying can't. to say, we're not going to allow this pro progress to happen. And it is, my, I've said this on the show a million times, it is too soon to define and limit and regulate the internet. We don't know what it is yet. We don't know how it operates yet. And for the EU, the ultimate hubris here is for the EU to come in and decide. We know how the internet should operate. We're going to say we don't know yet. It, you're too. Right. You're too old. Well, it's again, in this in this document, uh, in this complaint from the EU, as proof that Google has be is helping itself, they show that Google's comparison shopping services has gained in traffic, while rival shopping services have decreased. It's a success. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> That's the proof that they offer. Well, look how successful yeah. Google is. You, you know, know what a chill success. Forty-five. That's what, this, that's what this does. Yeah, it chills success. Look how successful Google is. We can't have. We can't have that. So uh, now, if, let me just ask: Is is two point? What is it? Two point four two billion euros. Can Google just pay that and move on? Because it's going to change their business and how they operate. It's not the so money. It's the consent they decree that they're worried about. But 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 the, that's why I say it's such a political decision. This is political in every way. This is not so, Stacy. I would buy what you're saying about the need for the conversation, if it mm -hmm. happened in a more sane structure. No, companies this, don't have no because we don't have these conversations in sane structures because we're all people. We have these conversations only when there's like self-interest at play. So up until now, everyone's like, hey, we're going to be good. We'll self-regulate. We'll talk about these things. And until someone establishes a line, though, we don't know when someone's going over it. And so, so Google tried to settle three or four times. They were well, the yes, last, and that, her, her, her prior successor two ago was ready to settle. The decision was done. And then the publishers cried bloody murder and went after the politicians in the EU and stopped the settlement. I'm happening. just thanking God that big settle. business has no impact here in the United States on what our legislators do, because yes. that clearly is a bad system. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. By the way, it's not over because, and we'll talk about Canada too, but the EU also has already come to a similar conclusion about Google's Android operating system and AdSense. So the other reason Google doesn't want to set, settle is because this is the yeah. beginning. This is not yeah. the end. And watch out. Android is going to be... So part of what's going on here, too, is that they demonize relevance and data and value and knowledge about people. They're also going to demonize free. That's what the publishers hate most. That's what Murdoch and Springer hate most. And they're smart people, especially at Springer. Um, and and they believe in this notion of creating a product called content, and you must pay us for it. And free is what most threatens them. And so Android, in its core business model, 
is going to be seen, I guarantee you, it's going to be seen as virtual, as, as a digital version of dumping. Ooh, it, that's so it, controversial. It I want to read about that. Consumers. Okay. Jeff, I would like you to write the idea about digital dumping. That's a fun concept. Mm. It is fun. Actually, well, I'm writing I, it down right now. So, because Stacy, you know, I don't need to take your meds to forget things. I have something <laughs> called age. Pencil. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm getting there. I think that Pencil. in addition to the medicine, I just think I'm getting older. It's not the first so. time that's happened. I mean, that's what Microsoft did to compete against Netscape. Remember, Netscape mm -hmm. was charging well, the for argument. Right. its browser. And Microsoft moved in. By the way, got in trouble with not only the uh, EU, but the Department of Justice uh, because they moved in and gave away their browser. I remember when the Internet Explorer 3.0 came out back in 1995 or six. It was me immediately saw this is that's all over for Netscape. What about things like zero rating though on data plans, which I know can be controversial. Look at like Facebook and what happened in India. I know those are net neutrality things, but they're also kind of digital dumping. Oh, this is such a fun area. Digital oh my dumping. <laughs> Next on okay, Judge sorry. Stacy. <laughs> Like, I just want to assign Jeff, like, Jeff, that's your new book. That's your new article. Do oh, it, Jeff. it is. That would be a good book. Yeah. Sorry. Digital dumping. Jeff's like, someone else should write it. <laughs> our show today brought to you by, oh, I had such a nice meal last night. I made a Blue Apron meal. We just got our new Blue Apron box. So we're, you, we get three meals. Uh, we get the Blue Apron for a couple. So that means it's for two people, although we always split it three ways. And there's plenty. Um Blue Apron delivers you all the ingredients fresh that you need to make an amazing meal, plus the recipe, right to your door. They're the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Last night, we had a delicious steak. I made, uh, it, it had fingerling potatoes, which I roasted. They came out perfectly. They, they, uh, we had a nice butter lettuce uh, salad, and, and I made a dressing. Again, all of the ingredients I, I got from Blue Apron, it had a little thing of creme fraiche, uh, a little thing of blue cheese crumb, blue cheese crumbles. It was such a good dressing. It was this creamy blue cheese dressing. A little thing I'd never used before uh, called uh, ver verjuice. Have you ever used V-E-R-J-U-S? Uh, oh, we've talked about this before. Jus. This is the wine, sweet, yeah. vinegar It's incredible. Something. It's the pressed yeah. juice of unripened grapes. It's not vinegar, yes. but it's acidic. <laughs> It's delicious. Anyway, so verju and creme fraiche and uh, blue cheese crumbles. It was the most amazing dressing. And I, oh, but the nice thing is it only took me about half an hour to make an amazing dinner. I told you the couple of nights before I made this cannelloni. It's, it's so great. So let's take a look. Let's go to the menu and see what's on the menu this week. We've been, uh, I should log into my account because we've been going crazy. I think we've got all our, all our Blue Aprons through August. Now, the nice thing about Blue Apron is it, it's not a subscription in the sense that you have a weekly commitment. You just you get it when you when you order it. You don't get it if you don't. So when we went on vacation, for instance, we we didn't get any blue apron boxes. You customize the recipes. You pick from the menus. They don't repeat more than once a year. So you're always going to try new delicious meals. Uh, I think we've already ordered for this week. I'm trying to remember. There, those are, that's the family friendly uh, Fontina cheeseburgers or red and white. That's, those are for a family of four with kid friendly ingredients. I can't remember. I was. It's fun. This is something we do every week or so. Lisa and I'll sit down and look at the menus and pick our our meals. Bul oh, I love this. I, I hope we ordered it. I can't remember. Bulgogi beef and soba noodle stir fry with marinated vegetables. <gasps> you could. Can you? <laughs> my mouth is just watering. So what? Like, you I'm get, glad you're doing these earlier in the show now. I know this is so mean. <laughs> so this is no, what you get in the box. He's gonna get hungry the whole show now. Even the meat is uh, fresh. Nothing's frozen. So th you get 10 ounces of thinly sliced beef. You get one carrot because you don't want, there's no waste. You need one carrot, you get one carrot. One cucumber, one scallion, one bunch of cilantro and mint, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. They come in little bottles. Two sable tablespoons of this new sauce that I, uh, I love, the yak yakiniku sauce. I bought some because I liked it so much. It's kind of a Japanese barbecue uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what uh, gochujang is, but you get a tablespoon of that and then sesame oil. So this is what is so cool. You do this. Those are fresh soba noodles. You'll flip your lid. The ingredients are the best as if you were going to the best grocery store, except it costs you less, less than $10 a meal uh, because they don't have the overhead. 
Seared chicken and creamy pasta salad with summer squash and sweet peppers. Vegetarians will love Blue Apron, too. How about fresh basil fettuccine pasta with sweet corn and cubanelle pepper? <sighs> I could just go on Ooh, and on. potato-crusted catfish. Ooh. Oh, doesn't that sound... Catfish is so good. Ooh. Isn't that good? Red, white, and blue pizza. What's the blue? <laughs> All right, you must be looking at the family plan. Let me look here. No, I'm looking at your screen. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Olives? Uh, Blueberries. Uh, Beets. Oh, no. no, the blue, it's a purple potato. No. Okay, fine. Oh. Purple potato. Yeah, you don't mind? So Beets, it comes with fresh pizza do dough. I hate Beets. It comes with tomato sauce, mozzarella Never cheese, been. garlic, arugula, peach. Peach. Purple potatoes, peach. basil, asiago cheese, a shallot. By the way, Lisa and I both decided we're going to use shallots more often. Shallots are so yeah, good. Yeah, they are nice. They are. They're sweet. They're, they're delicious. And I always forget I to get shallots. And I have a tuna recipe with shallots in it. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, Blue Apron is all no, about onion. shallots. They have wine choices now, too, by the way. And the wines are fun. They're not quite full bottles. They're not quite splits. So they make a wine recommendation, and you can order those. So we've been ordering wine, too, to go with our meals. Well, you're kidding. No. Uh -huh. It's That's so new. freaking awesome. So all I got to say is... BlueApron.com slash twig. Check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with your first purchase, plus free shipping. BlueApron.com slash twig. There is no doubt in my mind, and Blue Apron so it convinced me, that you can have produce delivery that's perfect. The, the produce I get in my yeah. Blue Apron box is better than anything mm -hmm. I ever get at the grocery store. It's amazing. Blue Apron. In the early days of all that stuff, at Connie Nast, we were involved. We had to get investments in some of those companies, and, and the logistical problems were just tough. too great. Yeah, but uh, you know, was it Grocery.com? What was the one that wasted a huge amount of money? Remember Peapod and Webvan? Webvan, Cosmo. Uh, okay, they didn't the do one. groceries. Cosmo uh, did like a, a six a carton cream. of cigarettes and ice cream. It's yeah. a little weird. <laughs> and it was a guy. I used to order. Cream. I used to order stuff on Webvan all the time because I lived in New York City and they didn't have like basic stuff back then. So the, I'd be like, "What? No New York store stocks Rotel? What? How am I going to make queso?" So. Exactly. Ooh, I want your queso recipe. Yeah. Oh, it's, I love it's, queso. Okay, that that queso recipe is a can of Rotel and a block of Velveeta cheese. It's no, not easy. no, no. I'm just telling you, I have lots of great recipes, but the queso recipe <laughs> is just like straight up all Americana, terrible for you. Oh, but but delicious. Oh, it's very delicious. Rotel is tomatoes gonna... and diced green chilies, right? Yeah, and you can use it to anything. I mean. You can add it to your chicken a la king or whatever, yeah. and you can make like a delicious. I don't know if like we can get Rotel out here. I don't know we can, no. That sounds like That's a Texas reason. treat. No. So really, you just add a can of Rotel to a block to of Velveeta, and that's queso for you? Uh-huh. Well, it used to be, yes. Does it all? You don't yeah. eat it anymore because it's, uh, it's poison? poison but no. now i usually go out now i don't i don't have parties you where live I in austin the best queso in the world right that's what i go out and get my cheese miss fancy pants now yeah Ooh, you know the best thing so take all your cheese rinds and like old chunks of cheese just as much as you have if you save it all and you throw it in with a bunch of garlic into like a, a little pot to melt it all down with the garlic and some wine and then you get some crusty bread and you just dip it in and people are like oh my god this is delicious and you're like <laughs> i just cleaned out the fridge no, I always save uh, Parmesan rinds because they use it in sauces and stuff. In soup. Just Soups. toss it in your veggie yeah, soup. Yeah, that's how you make uh, minestrone. You have, to, oh. you have to have Parmesan rind. Well, now I'm really disappointed. I thought you would have like some gourmet queso recipe. <laughs> it's queso. I, I have many gourmet recipes, but queso is not No, one. I think of you as like this great gourmet cook. Oh, so funny. Oh. But you know what? I bet it's delicious. We used to have you know a producer at Tech TV who had a Super Bowl dip. It was basically... A can of chili and, and a block of Velveeta, and you put them in. Or no, maybe it was uh, some cream cheese too. You put it all in a crock pot, and you heat it till it's melted, and that's it. Yep. And it was the best thing ever. <laughs> yes, the queso is not bad. It's just you're like, no, it wow, sounds what great. am I putting in my body? Yeah, yeah it's not really cheese. No, it's, uh, it's, it's like government cheese. So it is uh, actually government cheese. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what is this Canadian decision? This uh, Google must alter worldwide search results. See, it was there was a Vancouver tech company, small Canadian firm, which got an injunction against Google 
this is even more dangerous. This is a worse decision. Equus Tech, they make network devices, and they sued another company of illegally relabeling their products and uh, and selling its own products under their brand name. Another kind of selling knockoffs, basically. Uh, they they left the province, the competitor Data Link, but they continue to do business. And you can Google them, find them, and and order products from them, even though, you know, they're illegal, according to Equus Tech. So Equus Tech went to court, and they got an injunction from the Supreme Court of Canada that Google may not link to these data link web, this competitor's web pages, and not only must do so in Canada, but now a court in British Columbia says... They've got to do it everywhere in the world. And today, the Supreme Court upheld that order. It's the first global de-indexing order, according to uh, a From Canadian. Canada. We liked you, Canada. You were the nice guys. Seven to two, the guys. Canadian Supreme Court rejected the idea that this was a threat to free speech. They say, hey, Google already does this to delist child pornography, hate speech, to comply with DMCA copyright. The judge wrote, Judge Rosalia Bella wrote, this is not an order to remove speech that on its face engages freedom of expression values. It's an order to de-index websites that are in violation of several court orders. Not until it gets to Iran, China, Russia. Well, wait a minute, though. We've not it to date, she says, accepted that freedom of expression requires a facilitation of it unlawful It sets a precedent in the structure. And, and the court decision in Iran could be this... Uh, or or pick your country. I don't want to pick on Iran, but but you know this. Let's say um, uh, or or Doyen's uh, tame courts in Turkey decides yeah. that uh, Erdogan any a cartoon about Erdogan exactly that there is uh, insulting should never be seen again on the internet anywhere and forces Google says by the way not this isn't just Turkey this is everywhere or the or the Danish Muhammad cartoons right. Or, you know, pick it, right? And now there is a precedent and a structure that we will be at the lowest common denominator of free speech on the Internet if this happens. Here's a tweet from John uh, Bergmeier. He's an attorney for uh, Senior Council of Public Knowledge. He says, Canada joins a list of countries asserting global, jurisdic global jurisdiction over the Internet. He says, copyright. Maybe RTBF people might cheer this, but there does need to be some limiting principle. For instance, I don't want the UK's crappy Amen. libel laws to de facto apply worldwide. Most company, countries don't have fair use, for instance. We have fair use in the United States, but that wouldn't be a defense in another country. So fair use would end in the United States, at least as far as Google's concerned. I and what is the enforcement structure here? Well, that's a good question. I mean, because that's really what this hinges on, because usually we just how do say, they, oh, how well, do that's they enforce a stupid this? law, yeah. and we ignore well, it. Well, probably $2.7 billion fines. Okay, well, and that's, I mean, like, if you look at, like, the freak out over GDPR, that's, that's those are significant fines. That's, so Yeah, they are quite significant and, and proportional. So, so Google gave in to, of course, the right to be forgotten, which is similar. But the right to be forgotten is only in the EU, right? Yes, and indeed they were doing it country by country, and that got them. And, and the EU wasn't crazy about it, but they didn't. They didn't push back. Uh, they pushed back a little bit. Uh, where if you are, I think I think what happens is this: if you're in, I, I pick a country. The France. French, the French right now are are want it to be worldwide. In fact, it's right. in front of the French Supreme Court right now. So what I think happened, though, and I th I could be wrong here. I'm sure my chat room will correct me. I think what happened was at first Google said no, we're going to do it only in, in a country. That 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 if you search. Google in France, you search, search Google France in France, you won't find it. But if you search Google UK, you'll find it. Then I think the French got it, so no, anybody in France can't find it. That was the next step of this. Now this is the further step that no one in the world can find it. And that's just, I mean, you talk about a higher responsibility, the judge in Canada should have seen the further implications of this. And for her to say, oh, well, but no, speech is fine, doesn't matter. Because it sets a precedent. The definition of free speech varies tremendously, Judge, across the world. So and the rest of the world, sadly, is not Canada. Right. I wish it were. So what is not. Google's choice? They either do that or they get out of Canada? They can't they can't appeal this because it's the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court. But they can appeal to the local court about certain strictures or certain things about it. So there is there is some wiggle room in this. Um you know, does Google go to the world? 
you know, court in the Hague. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, is, I don't know. What do I you don't do? know if that gets better. Does it, go, well, does it go to Vladimir Putin and ask him since he's going to be our boss? You know, so I don't what's know. the upshot of all this? Do we, um, I mean, does Google selectively pull out of countries? Do they go, they have what's to that, go, they go along stuff? with it or they're out of Canada, right? Was it, well, I mean, it, Yeah, the, so so you're asking two questions. One is what do they do about Canada, and two is what do they do about the next country that demands the same thing? Right, right. They so look at what happened with the the link tax in Spain. Google said Spain, no Google News for you, no soup for you. Pulled out. Right when Germany went crazy over. And by the way, um, we know that that had a very negative impact on the amount of did. traffic driven to Spanish mm -hmm. news sites. Yes, it did. Cutting off your nose, spite your face, and cost them also, a lot of money. Also, when Google got into all the problems with Street View in Germany, they finally said "eff it" and pulled that out. Is there a minor "eff it" they can they can do here? But no, this is search. Let's cheer up. I got. Have some taste I on. have in my hands. And <gasps> Stacy has in her hands an Echo oh, Show. You know what, though? It takes forever to download the software. So plug that puppy in right. and just get All it going. Right. <laughs> this is not mine, but uh, on, oh, here's those tabs that you were talking about. I love that. Oh, see? Just, Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's the easy opening, easy opening package. Actually, Amazon's always done this with their Echoes. They've been very easy to get into. Very hard. They're like, quick. Open it and using. start buying stuff. <laughs> we don't want to get in the way. So this is Megan Maroney's. It will be associated with her account. Just we FYI. Have to so be you'll be friends with Megan. Yeah, you'll be friends with Megan, not me. Good news. You don't have I to. Love, don't, I love Megan. You don't have to worry about Leo dropping in at all hours. This is what and, it looks like. So we've already seen reviews on Engadget and elsewhere. It's essentially a kind of junky Amazon Fire tablet. You know, it's like 980, 1024 by 980 or something. Seven-inch tablet attached to an Echo device. It sounds good. You'll hear it in a second, actually, when it pops on. They, somebody was saying it sounds better than the old Echo. It does. It's it's much more resonant. Okay. If I had I a resonant to... voice, like, like... Does it sound voice. like... There you go. Hey, baby. I was like, I cannot you know, do that voice. when a man and a woman... Decide. Oh, here we go. That it's time to spend two hundred and thirty dollars on a connected. <laughs> to let Jeff Bezos into the bedroom. Yeah, I didn't return this one. I canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> you canceled it. I canceled it because I just, of, I just said why? I'm not going to use it. I'm oh, not going to use come this. Come on, Jeff. I ordered them I all. Like, um, we order everything from Amazon because, well, it's time. I, I think it's. A good thing for the kitchen. I was, I'm trying to convince my I'm mom that she wants kitchen. one. Yes, I ordered two, and I'm sending my mom one. I don't have to convince her. I'm just sending it to her. Well, see, my mom wouldn't put it anywhere. Otherwise, it would just sit in a box on her. It well, wouldn't my even. My mom She'd... and I FaceTime all the time, and I just thought, well, this will be easier for her. Well, so my mom and I Skype, but Skyping with my mom is just a nightmare because, you know, she's like, oh, I've got a, who am yes. I on Skype? What's That's my password? That's why I do FaceTime. Well, we started with, well, I set her up with Skype, and we ended up doing FaceTime. All mm -hmm. right. Well, so I tried to get her in Duo. Oh, listen to it. Oh, is it going to say something? It goes... Can you show... Oh. I love that sound. The, uh, I do too. I'm alive sound. In fact, sometimes, sometimes I, yes, I, I turn just, off my Wi-Fi exactly. network. <laughs> Your Echo device is ready for setup. Okay, Echo device. Oh, first I have to put it on our, uh, our, our Wi-Fi. Uh, I guess I'll put it on this one. It, oh, and your Wi-Fi password is automatically shown, or it was in my case, so yeah, just me, know that. Let me, don't, let me not show it. <laughs> da -da -da -da, monkey one. You know what? We really should use monkey one, two, three as our Wi-Fi password. Nobody would, oh. ever, nobody would ever think we'd actually do that. <laughs> oh, it says, welcome, Jerry Wagley. Oh, it's not Megan's. I'm I'm now oh. Jerry Wagley. Thank you, Jerry, for sacrificing this. We're going to get another one, apparently. You so, can re I can presume you can wipe it, can't you? Yeah, it says, it's registered to Jerry. If that's you, type yes, because it's got Jerry's current billing information. Yes, yes, don't. <laughs> type no to use a different account. Yeah, no, that's me. Alexa, bye. 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 We're in and North it America. Actually it doesn't confirm or ask for your password. That was kind of what was stunning to me. Well, they set, they've always done this. They've set them up at the factory, right? 
And now right. it's going to do the update, which takes forever. But if you steal the box, someone stole my box. Stealing. Exactly. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, that's a good point. They're ordering now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Jerry Wagley. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I think I'm going to order a Corvette. How would There's they? That's a stuff. good point. It doesn't ask for your password. And maybe it does. So let's see. Uh, what should I so buy? So it's going to update. So it has three Alexa. buttons on the top. It's got uh, plus Violin. and minus for volume and then the mute button. So these are this, effectively the same buttons that they're on the top of the uh, of the uh, of the regular Echo Cylinder. On the back. Yeah, you totally buy stuff. On the back, though, there's no connector for anything else. It's just power. So you can't connect this as you can with the Echo to anything else. So it's going to update the device. Let's install those device updates. I'm sorry the screen's so bright. Your device will restart twice. It's going to restart twice. Powering off. All right, well, I'm just going to put this over here. And yeah. we'll, uh, we'll let it. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. Anthony Nielsen came running in with a ca handheld camera so that we're, we've got we've got more. Who's that for? <laughs> okay, here's Megan. So if we want to open another one, no, no, we we'll save this so that you can get another unboxing later. <laughs> you mine, can have them I'm talk getting, to each other. Mine are coming too. All right. So uh, while Alexa. it's updating, while it's updating, uh, we'll uh, we'll do some other stuff, and then uh, what we're what we want to do is uh, is do a, a call between you and me, right? Well, that's what I would want to do. Yeah, but. So you if can you don't do things do like Echo Call Dad, show the front door camera, play top songs, show my calendar, set a timer for three minutes, show my phone. I like to show. So I have Nest cams. Would it show the Nest cam on this? I think it would. I don't. It might if and Nest I know it integrates works with the Ring. Yeah, Nest may not have integrated with them yet. Oh, Nest. because it's Google. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It works with uh, uh, Ring, Honeywell, uh, Arlo. The Logitech cameras. Okay. So and, I can oh, my August doorbell that I hate. So, but I can say I go to the Ring doorbell. So that's good. So it'll go to my Ring. Ring oh. is a sponsor, I should mention. Um, I, I would should, like it to use those Nest cams. I just bought uh, some Nest cams. I, I started talking about this while you were setting up because I thought there was going to be like a long pause. Um, I should have known better. But they were talking on the chat room about wiring Ring doorbells. Sponsor alert to yes. um, old houses and old wiring. Yeah. I'm just going to say this because I did this, so don't do this. I blew out my doorbell transformer oh. because it was older. Oh. So if oh. you're going to wire these video doorbells, spring for the 24-volt transformer because the 16-volt is what I'm most sure houses have. it says have. that somewhere in the exactly. manual, but who reads the manual? <laughs> exactly. So that's my, <laughs> my pro tip to you guys installing doorbells. And I, by the way, I owe an apology to Ring because I made a snarky comment a few weeks ago about them not, you know, not being a sponsor anymore. Oh, yeah. And I got a call from uh, the founder of Ring. I said, what are you talking about? Of course. And they bought a whole bunch more ads. So I apologize. Hey, Ring. Uh, <laughs> Getting said, a call from Jamie. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jamie called. Jamie, literally, I talked to Jamie. Jamie said, yeah. first of all, you don't remember me, do you?" I said, N "No." He said, "I've been on Twit because Jason Calacanis. I didn't remember this, but years ago, auctioned off a Twit ad, and Jamie won for like wow. his first product, which I don't even remember. It was an app or something. Doorbot. Doorbot. It was terrible, but Jamie will admit that. He learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then he went on Shark Tank, right? And then, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, and then Ring, he founded Ring later. So I said, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. So he said, I'm a huge fan. Of course we love you. You're, we're, <clears throat> anyway, so I apologize. I was snarky for no good reason. Did you um, get in trouble with your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Of course I did, because she sells <laughs> I feel like ads. Leo's probably in trouble with Lisa a Pretty lot. Pretty much though. all the time. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> no, Lisa's really, you know what? I should oh, be. This is great. I should be in trouble <laughs> yes. all the time, and she's ex she's an extraordinarily she's patient person. For instance, you know when when you marry somebody who's on the air every day, all day, it's probably you know you don't sign up for this, but inevitably I'm going to talk about her as I am right now, and she's not crazy about that, but uh, she to she tolerates it. She's very kind. She says, "Do you always have to use me as an example?" <laughs> well, well you're, she's your hurler. She's your yeah. life. She said, well, at least tell the truth. <laughs> so, well, I, I exaggerate for purposes of humor. Anyway, I, you don't need to get in our marital 
cheese. So <laughs> that's a that's a queso dip you don't need to put your chip in. Oh, so so uh, uh, before we went to the Amazon break, there um, the uh, so so the Canada case. I added to the rundown. There's now one in Arizona, where a judge ordered oh, articles taken down in the U.S. At least it just blow me a kiss. I love you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this is just this is a snowball. We're gonna see. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Just oh, by the way, Amazon is announcing a smart home camera control with us. Hello. So. I guess, uh, thank you, uh, Scooter X, for developers. You will be able to, I don't know, my, my machine just turned itself off for some reason. Oh, yeah. No, they, they launched this last week. Okay. And this is, is this what everybody's Nest? using. Well, I don't, they have, Nest has to make the decision to oh, integrate. Oh, because they're Google, you know, they want to work with Google Home. And but you can use the Nest on the Echo. That was a big deal when that happened last year. Okay, we're still updating. Yeah, and it's going to so, play a five-minute video. <sighs> After that, it's going to play a five. I have to watch a five minute video. So let me ask you, fast forward are you going to turn on drop in? Is there anyone you know well enough to allow them to turn in, turn on your camera? If I, if it's in the kitchen, I would let my parents do it. You don't, I would never have it drop in in my bedroom though. That's just crazy. No, 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 no. Well, and I, uh, I don't know. I guess you don't use your kitchen the same way we do. Do I don't want. I think. I think we're heading to GMI. We're, we're heading right. So into in GMI. Well, it's a right big kitchen. There's a lot of room. <laughs> now Lisa it's in my here. office now right now, and back. I would let like a colleague drop in on my office. Drop in. Be, so like, for those who don't know, is the weirdest feature. In fact, I was saying, talk, we were talking about this the other day in our editorial meeting. I said Amazon turns this stuff on just to see if somebody wants to use it. They're taking the metrics. It's all about data gathering. They don't know if somebody's going to want this, but the idea is that you can turn on the camera on this thing without warning. Uh, well, but oh, here, if you... Oh, let's see if this works. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just realized this. I'm sorry. I just got too excited. I want... Which, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> the, okay, hold on. I'm going to see if I can drop in from my phone app onto the show that's here in my office. Ah, you have to obviously I, open it up, give permission, and... Uh, uh, what I'm curious about is, is there any, could you, is there a warning uh, to you as the drop-in? Yes. Can you say, Recipient? yeah, can you say, oh, no, no, don't, no. So what you can do is, okay, here's what it looks like on my app. You get this little bar in the conversation saying, oh, is my screen too bright? Yeah. Hold on. I was, I was shooting video, so I needed a bright screen for that. Okay. See the drop-in bar? Yeah. Drop-in bar. Okay. So let's drop in on somebody. I get the choice of. Dottie, which is the bedroom, my Echo that's downstairs, and my Echo Show. These two, oh, so the first well, How two, would you drop in on an audio-only device? Let me tell you, because this is a cool feature they announced <laughs> two days ago. Oh, this is the intercom. Intercom! Yeah. Oh! So, then, so we were, my husband and I were actually using this to be like, what's up? Come down, it's dinner time. Oh, we're definitely going to use that. We have, yeah, so we have Echoes in every single room. And the light turns green when you drop in on somebody and it chimes. So if I drop in and no one's, I, I can try to see what happens on the show. I, so I, I could say like, uh, Lisa, dinner's ready. Come on in. And it would go and, oh, that'd be so cool. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. When I was a kid, my mom got so tired of yelling upstairs, dinner's ready, that she bought a bell. Oh, see here, oh, I'm see dropping here. in on my show. Oh. There I am. There I am. There I am. <laughs> and now I consider myself the greatest. So I, had, I, I ended that for audio quality purposes, but <laughs> what it did is it it showed me a blurry version, and then I would have had to touch it. And if I touched it, then the camera turns on. But it does see the blurry version. Or okay. I think I could have also verbally said. That's not so bad. So you have to give permission. There's no uh, drop in without like. your knowledge. So if someone else wants to drop in on me, um, and let's see how I can, I don't know, what I don't know is how to add drop in, how to other people to drop in yet. That's, that's my next. How do you lie next. about not being at the device when you don't want to talk to somebody? You just say, I can't talk right now. Uh. Oh, remember those days? <laughs> I can't talk right now. Wow. Or like, well, I mean, it's not like a like, jerk thing. It's just like. I don't know. Your daughter says that to you? Are you going to accept that answer? 
uh, well, it's my daughter. If if like there's an echo in her room and she's got a boy up there, I'm gonna be like, well, excuse well, me, yeah. coming on up. <laughs> this changes this changes the dynamic considerably. Does your but, daughter have yeah. an echo in her room? She's going to because she wants ours, yeah. and she yeah. has a Sonos. But since the echo, it's it's a much better UI for her because she doesn't even like having a smartphone. This is really interesting, y'all. She hates charging have, charging a phone. Yeah. So she just like hangs out and texts people on her computer. This is going to change when she moves around more. But right now she just echoes and does everything that way. And I think it would be really interesting if you could text and access people through these devices. She may be like, oh, schmoan. I just want to talk to something in my room and then take something on the go with me. I don't know. Did you ever see the Dick Van Dyke intercom episode? Oh, no. I did not. It's called All About Eavesdropping. Let me see if I can get it to play here. This is... Uh... Somehow I will get rid of that other man. Oh, you... So there's apparently uh, the neighbor's intercom starts... Oh, there it is. The neighbor's intercom starts uh, playing back in the Van Dyke household. And they start listening in. Oh, I can't find it. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Well, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Echo wants me. Introducing. Here it is. You want to watch a short video? It says brief. It's five minutes. <laughs> I'd rather watch Dick Van Dyke. Introducing Amazon Echo Show. It's everything you love about Skeller. But now she can show you things. Play movies from Amazon Video, view your photos, or see what's on your calendar and to-do lists. Is it too bright? And now there's a new way to be together. Make hands-free video calls to friends and family. Like this. Hello, call Tina. Oh, dear. I apologize for you everybody at home. You or call someone on their supported Echo device or the Echo app on their phone. Ready for some music? Echo it's very sweet. The room with bold stereo that looks sound. like uh, Mary Tyler Alexis, Moore. Show today's most popular songs. Here are popular Oh, songs. see, there's a new word, show. Now you Alexis, can show because you've got a screen. Three. And mm -hmm. with Amazon Music, you can follow... Oh, this is great. I'm now going to replace all my echoes and dots. Helps you really? I would wait. Of your busy life. Why? I'll live with it just Alexis. for a little bit. Yeah, all right, all right. Sushi it's also a lot more expensive, right? It's like 200 something. 230. Yeah. I think you can buy two. If you buy two, you get 100 bucks off. I did that because I, I bought one for my mom. I think she'll like this. And you know what? You're right. The speaker is much better. Isn't it? It's actually yeah. very good. And it I, just shows you how much we're all in here. Jerry bought one. Smart. Megan bought one. I bought a couple. Things to try, just Here's the thing I don't know. You're not going to watch a movie on this. You're going to watch a movie on your main no, no, screen. No, no, no. What it really Actually, is is what you saw with the, the I think the songs and like weather reports and stuff like that, right? Well, CNBC actually just did a skill where you can show the news. Like again, oh. think about those kitchen TVs yeah, you have it, people used to yeah, have, or you have it in the bathroom, or used to, used to. I'm sorry, the kitchen TVs people apparently. Hey, still Jerry, have. do you want me to start a 30 day free trial of Echo on a uh, Music Unlimited? Just remember to cancel Search it. Still. Okay. I'm loading it. Please wait. Now, what is it doing? So here's the question. How do we get, how do we connect for call Jerry? So there you go. This is the interface that you see all the time. Wait a minute. What? Somebody's already calling me. It's Jerry. Hey, Jerry. How do I, what do I? I'm very confused. Oh, he's calling you, you from his app. You have Jerry's device, but Jerry's calling Jerry's device. I'm so confused. I can't, I can't. Hi, so Jerry. Jerry's calling from the Echo app, Escalade app. Uh, I'm great. You know, the quality on this is fantastic. It is. And you see that this is my picture, so it's kind of a wide angle picture. Yes, yeah, totally. I can see Anthony and everything. Yeah, Anthony's the camera guy uh, taking it on the other way. The, you know what? That looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Oh, oh. who's that? Lisa, we're going to put this in the bedroom, in the kitchen, in the closet, in the bathroom. We're putting this in every... Is this a drop-in? No, this is a call. This is not a drop-in. Or is it a drop-in? Is it a drop-in or a call? This, I think Jerry's it's saying it's a drop-in. So that's just like yeah. a call. I don't have to... Now, what happens... No, you have to answer a call. If you tell someone to call, you have to yeah, actually answer it. All right. This is this is uh, so um, cool. All right. Bye, Jerry. Did you have to touch, touch the screen? Did you get a busy signal? I had to touch my screen. So I don't think this is okay. a, He says he did a drop in, though. 
Right. So when you drop in, he gets See, a blurry vision. Yeah, we saw and the blurry you, of him, too. But when you call someone, and you can actually call people in your own house, although I'm not sure why you'd want Should to, I, you can um, actually... How would I call you? You would say, call Stacy. If I were I, your friend. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, Kevin and I, and I can't... <laughs> I'm going to say, Show the I don't screen. remember this how Kevin the, and I The default up, but, screen just sits there and it shows the... With a fingerprint. Wow, that's an ad. Oh, oh. Yeah. It, so this is really interesting. This is what I wanted you to see. Is it so news? There's it's news. Um, you get these notifications and you can set it up in settings. If you pull down from the top screen, you'll... So yeah, pull down and see settings. Yeah. If you go to settings, you can change the home screen is what that is. Now I know how Ginger Rogers felt. So I can tie this to Bluetooth. That's nice. And then I can see what my home screen can do. Home card preferences. Uh, so, rotate continuously. That's the default. You can just rotate once. And then I can have notifications from other services. Is left... Is, is right. Is that on or off? That's not uh, communicative at all. But I presume that's on. Otherwise, yeah, it'd be on. dark, I'll bet. Yeah. Boy, yeah, that's yeah. a big difference. Um, upcoming events, yeah, drop-ins. See who's available from your contacts list. Uh, is Stacy so, in your contact list? No, and I don't know how to add people to my contacts list. This is what... Uh, I didn't know I oh, had an wait. Amazon contacts oh, list. Oh, you go to your... Okay, you go to your Echo app. Go to your Echo app, you Jerry. To the little people sign. And go to the people sign. And that's your sign. contacts. Okay. So, and it uses your phone's address book to find people you know who have an Echo device or the SLA app. Ah. These are the people I can reach. So I don't actually have anyone from Twit in my phone. Well, we'll yeah, I don't have your phone number either for obvious reasons. I think that was part of the court order. But um, Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be doing the show at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not allowed to be within five feet of you. We'll move the screen. So I can, away. like, Karsten should have it, or I can send it to Karsten if Jerry yeah, um, wants to give me his contact information or however. Oh! Jerry did it. Oh, no. He sent me his Gmail. Yeah. Jerry. So add Jerry. Oh, so we want to call you. I want to call you. All right. Hold up. Hold up. This this requires like dexterity. I don't usually I'm looking have. at the new really redesigned uh, Google News. It's kind of strange that Google would redesign a product like Google News that I don't even think like they even anybody knows they still do it. And there's a real problem here for us. A real problem. Why? Search for Google. Okay. In, in this... Oh, the search bar, the search bar right there. Search yeah. for Google. Google. Okay. All right. And you'll see, oh, this is pretty. There's Google stories eventually. Yeah. yeah. Now scroll down. TechCrunch, scroll, scroll, scroll. Fortune. Scroll, scroll, scroll. CNN, CNBC. Go all the way to the bottom. All the bottom, yeah. The selection and placement of stories on this page were determined automatically. There's no more. That's it. Oh. You get one screen load. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all for us. And then I went to Bing. Because we're not on the front page, you're saying? No, it's just I, if you do a search, you only get so many results. I already tweeted about it, begging them. I need more. I use that every week. I but, go through like 15 screen loads to, to prep for the show. Oh. Uh, Wait, I, I'm missing exactly it what's ends. happening. It ends. It ends. So it used to be it an ends. endless scroll, and now it's an, it yeah. doesn't oh. continue Page on. after page after page. This is a problem. Okay. Karsten is probably... Upset now? Are you Karsten? Here's this. Uh, we don't use using Google. Yeah, I haven't they, used Google News in years. Of, um, <laughs> really? When they got oh, that's how I do it every uh, week. What, whatever it was called. Google Reader. Good, Google yeah. Reader. Yeah. I Here's a story it. I missed. See, we ought to use it. Pregnant 19-year-old fatally shoots boyfriend and YouTube stunt gone wrong. Jesus. Okay. That is scary. That's terrifying. Uh, so uh, you see that, but that's what we missed by not using Google News. All right, so Jerry is endeavoring to contact, to add you to his scout list. I mean, his so echo. I, I added Jerry to my contact list, and I'm trying to get the echo, and I shut, opened and shut Ooh, my echo Oh, it does indoor app. temperature. That's, What's no. the temperature inside? You don't have any smart home devices. To get started, oh. go to the smart home section of the SLA app. I'm just sure I know it from you. all of... Well, hold on. Well, what's the indoor temperature? 
Currently in Austin, it's 90 degrees with mostly cloudy Oh, you clouds. know. Oh, no, that's outdoor temperature. That's outside, that's outdoor. Clouds in the sky with a low of 74 degrees. Oh, look, sea turtles. That's pretty. No, okay. you don't have to. It's all right, Al. Uh, Anthony, you can relax. <laughs> Poor Anthony. I, I, Every time I say, oh, look, he picks up the camera. Um, so can I call <laughs> if I said... And by the way, we, I don't know what we're going to do about this. You have to rename it to something else. Or we, I, I, anyway, so I apologize to everybody whose echoes are going off at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so just... Call Stacy Higginbotham. I couldn't find a contact matching Stacy Higginbotham. To see I may contacts, need... That doesn't pronounce Alexa your app. name right either. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's like water off a duck's back there. Um, I may need a phone number. No, Here, as as he sent me his... Email. I've been working on the railroad. <laughs> I've been working on the railroad by Cedarmont Kids. Oh, dear Lord. Stacy's going to start marching down the aisle. Like, it's recessional time. I've been working on the railroad. <laughs> oh, dear. It's, the speaker's much better. And it filled this room, didn't it? Oh, oh, oh. And it's putting the lyrics on. Oh. Oh. We're just going to oh. resume. Oh, Jesus. Carrie Oakey. I think we can play this without violating any rights. <laughs> I don't know. There's Don't. some civil rights that are being violated. <laughs> well, listen, seriously, will this do karaoke? Well, it oh, kind yeah. of is, isn't it? Well, but you got the, you got, but you're saying it along with the oh, voice. Stop. Oh, you mean? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Without the, without the. Oh, this got lots. Listen to Bohemian Rhapsody karaoke. Bohemian Rhapsody isn't included with Prime, but is available with Amazon Music Unlimited. Would you like to learn more? Here, uh, Tyna, won't you blow? <laughs> it stopped on a very oh, good uh, lyric. Uh, um, that's kind of Listen to the Star Spangled Banner karaoke. The Star Spangled Banner, United States National Anthem by the United States Marine Band. But it's not playing the lyrics. Well, here, I'm I've sorry. Got... Alexa, stop. I used to Alexa. work in radio, and whenever the Star Spangled Banner started playing at an event, you couldn't interrupt it. Are you serious? So we would always try to get out of the event. That's why the baseball games, you never hear the Star Spangled Banner, because once it starts, eh, we out of respect. you do, you got to keep going. So oh, wow. try show my audiobooks. Just hell, show my audiobooks. Well, it would show mine, but I don't know if you have uh, audiobooks, Jerry. Oh, right, Jerry. Just gonna show my audio. I don't books. see a book title, but I don't know if you have audio. Your book library is empty. Buy audiobooks. Visit audible.com. Man, and if the European Union ever gets a hold of Amazon, they're dead. Yeah. Man. Well, yeah. Yeah. How's traffic? The fastest route takes about 15 minutes. Oh. FM 22. I'll show you a map. So I'm not, I'm not getting a map. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, okay. But I just got a picture of people on the road. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got clip art. Nice. So if you just ask so, for the news, what it will show you? What will show you? Uh, it's it's the What's the news? Here's Stacy's flash briefing. Yeah, that's just a normal flash briefing. Oh, but what do you get in it? You might get more information. That's what I said you get it on the screen. Yeah. I'm just getting NPR, but Why CNBC just announced something screen today screen where they're going to put put clips in. actual content. Yeah. Let's go. Stop. Let's go. Show me a photo of a hot dog. <laughs> I, find any I get the time. reference. Oh, but wait a minute. There's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I can have Prime Photos seafood. in here. So it says to set up Prime Photos, download the app. That's interesting. So you could use this as a uh, as a picture frame because I, can. I could. It would if I had Prime Photos and I have uh, photos in it. I could ask for specific photos. That's kind of neat. So I was trying to figure out, because there's an option to use your personal photos, even if they're not stored uh -huh. on Amazon. Poor Dr. But I Mom. can't figure out how to get that. Her, her Amazon Echo is going off every time we I'm say sorry. the A word. Just hit, 
Hit that microphone. I, I don't, yeah, just mute it for the time being, and I apologize. It um, will show you your calendar. Who can I call, so, Jerry? Do you know anybody I can call? But do they have theirs set up? No. I'm sorry. Jerry, do you want to be like my friend and tell me no, your phone? It won't ring your phone. It'll only ring your echo. Echo doesn't well, have I, echo to phone calling. It only has echo to echo calling. No, I know, but it's not recognizing him in my contacts as someone who has an echo device. Ah, I wonder how. Oh, That's, Jerry, did you send her the address you used for your Amazon account? You did. Yeah. So somehow Amazon has a way of recognizing whether you have an echo or not. And apparently yeah, it uses, it's not doing that. And maybe it just does it like once a day. So maybe it's not continually yeah, it's running that call. Yeah. Okay, but hey, we get the idea. I was able to call Jerry. That worked That worked great. And it is a fairly wide-angle camera. I have to say, I uh, I was worried because I read the reviews that said this is a terrible screen. Um, but it's not a terrible screen. It's a, it's actually for what for where it is and how it how it's positioned. It's it looks great. I am I'm I'm actually more stoked about this than I was. Oh, it is through the phone number that you use for your Echo account. I'm reading the instructions. Hey, well, he gave you the <laughs> same phone number he uses for his Echo. Account. He gave me his email. I didn't get a phone number. Oh, you didn't get a phone number. So that she's, may be the issue. She's going to send you. He's going to send you his phone number, I guess, because you have to add that. She has to add your phone number to her contacts list. It's in the signature. Yes, and there's a way. Oh, look in your e look in his email. It's in the signature. Oh, he's one of those people who doesn't mind if people call him. Wow. By the way, much. am I stealing a number if I say that if Facebook went to two billion mentally active users this week? That's fine. Oh, it is one of your numbers. I'm sorry. It's okay. I got all this. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch the other numbers. ones. <laughs> You're a smart why I man. I got multiple numbers. It's Isn't no that You're amazing? Right. Two billion. And Harry McCracken uh, in Fast Company did a very good article about the growth team and how they have uh, worked to get to two billion. What I didn't know is they stalled out at seventy million. They thought for a while that's all we're going to get. Uh, remember, Facebook started uh, 13 years ago, and uh, it's grown to 2 billion users in that 13 years, but it wasn't a steady growth. So, in fact, the growth team was created when they hit that plateau uh, of 70 million users. And it was those guys who came up with all these interesting ways of uh, creating uh, growth, I guess. Some smart people. How Facebook used science and empathy to reach 2 billion users. Really nice uh, long run. Well, so they'll, they'll get accused, of course, of, of manipulating people's brains. Oh, yeah. Wait till the EU gets a hold of them. You know what I liked? Uh, one of the, the, the head of the growth team today said, we don't consider big data, uh, you know, we, we don't think it's all about, that growth is all about big data. He says growth is all about empathy, and the data gives us more empathy, more understanding of people, and that's how we grow. So there's some other numbers in, in, in the um, next web story that 175 million people use the love reaction every day. 800 million people like something every day. I really wanted to use the pride flag. It was there okay, for... Okay, Jerry and I are connected. Oh, I heard a bing. Okay. <laughs> so should... should uh... Oh, there's a so message. You should just be, oh, there was just a say, message for Jerry from Stacy. So I can now, can I call you? How do I call just you? Just say drop in on Stacy. Just go drop in on Stacy. This is cool. Stacy Higginbottom, right? Right. Can you see what I see? See, I see Twig, and you should see Blurry Me. I see. Bl I don't I see, see any blurry. nudity at all. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Here's my. <laughs> And then, oh, oh, it's cool how you come oh. in. That's cool. It kind of it doesn't cool. just pop in. You you slowly fade in. Oh, I guess that gives you time to stop picking your nose or to grab yeah, a shirt. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, I think this is a good camera. I think it's a good view. It's at least as good as, it's not quite as good as a Skype view is, but it's like, can you can you compare that? Flip back and forth between our view via Skype and and our view, not you, Stacy, uh, Karsten. So it's. I think Skype's obviously a lot better, better camera. Um, but I think for a video call, this is usable. 
Oh, it's easily. roughly the same. It's roughly the it's same. Just, this uh, is angle. World's Fair quality, yeah. World's Fair quality, yeah. It is, isn't this? 1964 World's New York World's Fair. Here we are. AT and T demonstrated the camera phone. Finally, here we are. 50 years later, we actually have a camera phone. Stacy looks more dubious on this than she does on the show. Uh, it's my profile. <laughs> no, All right, I'm gonna turn honest. around so so Stacy, so you can see me just so you can see what it looks like. Um, <gasps> I, now I'm well lit. Remember, we're I'm in a lit studio, so I have good quality. And actually, when I turn it around, you look pretty good. This is good. Yeah, this is very good. This would be a great. And the nice thing is, you're not holding something. You just relaxed. You go. So anyway, Stacy, I got this pitch I'd like to give you for my new IoT business. I think this is good. I might, I would, I'm, a, all right, I don't mean to do an ad for the Amazon show, but I'm impressed. What do you think, Stacey? Are you? I, I think the video calling is good. And here, can I hang up now or should we keep doing this? You I, can hang up. Okay. So, uh, hang up. The quality is very good too, I have to say. And um, we'll have to see over a longer period of time. Oh, it gives you the time of uh, the call. Ooh, it's got pretty screen. Pretty picture. I think I would want this everywhere in my house. What's the little notification there, Stacy? Or, or, or Leo? That's probably a message from Stacy. Oh, well, you've got a lot of notifications now. Stacy's home. Well, I'm not why am I not getting that? Oh, I think I turned turn that off. Hold on. Is that Yeah, I like that. Oh, and you can put do not disturb on. Now it's not a physical shutter. Oh. Are you no, calling wait, me again? When are you getting that thing? <laughs> I just long called long you by accident. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacey. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> I think it turns the volume up at the beginning of the calls because I had turned the volume all the way down. Oh, but so you can hear that I'm going, Stacy. Stacy. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Here I am turning it back down again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is cool. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to call you again. I don't really want to talk to you, so goodbye. Aw. Well, oh, well, you can turn well, the video off and you can end the call. So two options there. I just tap that video off or end call. All right. This is cool. This is cool. Now the intercom, well, how does the intercom work? That's not the intercom. Uh, that's drop in. Or is it drop in? Well, here, let me, let me, well, that's drop in. That's the same technology, but I could also, if I drop in it's on. It's not an intercom if I have to accept though. Jeff, do you want to be, you've got an echo right with you, right? No. Oh, oh, he's not at home. Oh, because you're at your office. Yeah. I can go I and run and grab a dot and then plug it in and show you. The green light goes around and it starts listening. So I can so, drop in on my kitchen. Uh, Jerry's going to go in the other office and intercom me, right? Okay, there you go. All right. Try. He says, I'm going to try. You can do it. Can you do it from the Echo app? Yes. He's oh, got an Echo in his that. office. Don't eat that. No, no. Don't eat that. That's her Echo. <laughs> oh, my God. The dog just ate the Echo. I presume, and we'll have to go deeper into this, we're going to do a full review on the new screensavers, but I presume there's a way to say, uh, these are off hours, don't call me in 2 a.m., Dr. Mom, please, I beg of you. I think oh, it's oh, only... Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, Drop in on Stacy. Oh, somebody's calling me. See, this is... But is this intercom? This is not good, because I have to answer. say yes. That's Jerry's home, so that's Jerry calling you. Right. But let's put it, I have to press You got to say answer. You got to click. You got to say answer. Oh, so it's yeah. not an intercom. That, it's not. Draw echo. I mean, hey. <laughs> that's going to Drop in on Stacy. Stacy Higginbottom, right? Right. Make bacon. But this is the same thing we did before. This is no different than calling right. you. Well, no. If you call me, I have to answer it. If you drop it right I'm now, I'm hearing he's... your audio though, without you doing anything. So this is the uh, intercom. Yes. yes. Well, this intercom and drop in are kind of the same thing. The difference is okay, you so... only let certain echoes into your drop in list. And drop in without it, so you don't have to accept to hear the audio. You have to accept to hear it to see the video. But we don't have to. Well, I, so so that's why it's an intercom. I could just say drop in on Stacy, and then you'll hear my voice, and we can talk. Right, except for after the show, I'm going to not let Jerry have drop-in privileges. Yes, I would. It encourage. looks like this. Okay. Can you see Jerry my screen? Jerry W. Twit. Yeah, yeah. So you can call. Oh, Jerry, that was your phone number. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Nobody saw it. <laughs> and if they did, Jerry, just say hi. 
Jerry, I'm sorry. Okay. There, it looks like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I'm just, uh, you know, it, 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 on first glance, I think this is a pretty compelling. It's too bad it's so expensive because <clears throat> one of the reasons I do have echoes in every room is because the dot was so inexpensive and I could put dots, you know, I could, if 40 bucks, I could buy five dots or whatever. Not that many. Three dots. Um, now all of our echoes are absolutely. Voice stuff? Say again. So can I mention, since we're on the topic of voice, can I yes. mention some other voice stuff? Yeah, move on. So yesterday, uh, John Borthwick's Betaworks, you know the Betaworks folks, yeah, right? sure. Uh, held a voice summit showing off, uh, they had an incubator, a, a beta camp, as they call it, being Betaworks, with eight voice companies just in this in this field. And just a few of them to mention, which are really interesting. Uh, one is called John Dunn. Two folks left the company that does, uh, what, what is it, uh, the AI company. Uh, the Viv. Viv? Whatever that Amy company is, right? And so they, 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 did, they did a demo where you give your agent an instruction and it calls and uses voice with human beings. So they demoed. <laughs> you wanted to find out whether this, this certain florist has peonies. So ask the so-and-so florist whether it has peonies. And it called off. We listened to it. And it says, Hello. Hello. I am calling. Do you have peonies? <laughs> and, and they say, no, we don't. Thank you very much. And then it reports back to you, no. Then they said, find me peonies. And so it could call, you know, 20 florists in New York. And then it comes back with the answer, I found peonies at this address. Really interesting. So you have the sense that the two agents will start, because, the, the, you know, the, the company has its phone mail jail, and you have your own agent, and they're just going to negotiate with each other until they come to peace. That was Facebook yes. M's initial idea. Remember that? Yes, right. So, so they, this they, is that uh, actually uh, happening. Is really two smart people to another company that I found really fascinating called Neurolex.ai. Brilliant guys, uh, Jim Schwabel, uh, founder. They have found and this. There's there's scientific research to this effect, and they're and they're and they're commercializing this. That voice samples are effective devices to help the diagnosis of especially psychiatric conditions. Wow. So imagine if they took this show. <laughs> they finally know what drug Stacy's on. And it's all kind of, <laughs> yes. And it's, it's all kinds drug, of okay. signals. How many words you use, what kinds of words you use, uh, uh, how, how fast you talk, and so on and so forth. There's just fascinating data in there. So I, of course, obnoxiously stuck up my hand and I asked the founder, have you used voice samples from the President of the United States? Oh, boy. And he didn't want to answer. Uh, so, which means he has. Yes, of course he has. And he doesn't uh, want to share the result with you, so you can imagine what the result must have been. There's another company called Earplay, which you can use today, where it's the old shtick of doing the story that, that you then have a place in. It gives you choices. It's like the like the old, um, what was the game we used to play where you, you were the wizard Telephone? in the jungle? With, oh. Yeah. Dungeons no, and the, Dragons? No, 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 no. The simpler one. Oh. Uh, um, uh, it just came out open source, and you played, you got all excited Zork. about it. A few no. Uh, the oh. early was yes. it? So, so, so it was it adventure? It gives you an adventure. It gives you a choice. And how does this do stories, or how does this do? I think what journalistically is interesting. How does it do? Uh, well, no, skip that. I know that. Give me this instead. It gives you a choice. Um, real quickly, a couple. A spoken layer, which is a company I like a lot. I've liked for a long time. They're a structure to add human voice to words. So they've got there. There's just tons of stuff. A third of the news on Google Home News, they do. And so you can get the New Yorker human voice, and they have a structure to sell out and do that. So there were some other companies there, but I just wanted to mention that, that this whole uh, uh, voice thing is fascinating. Dennis Crowley from Foursquare was there. Foursquare, which we talked about the story a few weeks ago, uh, has really become a tremendous data company. So Dennis was there, and, and he confessed – um, I don't think it was Chatham House rule. I think it was stream, so I hope this is okay. That is his young child. Um, first four words, the fourth word the child learned was a skeleton. Oh, boy. And, and somebody else said, oh, yeah, I'm hearing that all the time. That's just quite common. No kidding. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's kind of I don't of know depressing. either, but I thought you'd enjoy that. Isn't that cool? Wow. 
You know, at the end of this year, we'll know from the Social Security database research. I don't know if it comes out immediately, <laughs> but we'll be able to right. track the popularity of that name. Oh, you wouldn't name your kid that. In fact, I would think it would be the really? opposite. The popularity would plummet to zero. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you'll be able to see that data. <laughs> Just don't name your kid Echo or Computer either, because that those are the alternative uh, things. So. I am. Uh, I'm very excited now. <laughs> you know what? I'm so. I'm feeling kind of bad. I think I might. I got two. One for my mom. I think I might keep it. <laughs> Why? Just, just give one. Your, well, so this is the same thing the nucleus has. I want Remember? one by my uh, bedside. This is what. This is what. Um, no drop in. I got. I no. Yeah, don't let anyone drop in on that one. Well, no family can drop in on that one. They can't no, see anything. They can only talk to me. Well, even then, can they listen? Do they? Do they not hear until you say okay? No, they can listen. I can, like, if you yes. wanted to hear my kitchen right now, I would drop in on it and you can hear whatever's happening down there. See, yeah, you don't want that. Mom and dad are fighting. Mm. Or, or the else? alternative. You know, I really feel like we are entering, maybe it's, maybe I, I think I need, do you have any Xanax? Because I'm getting, I, I feel like Xanax. we're entering a very, I'm worried about two things. One, all those things you just described, Jeff, yeah, they sound really cool. But I also feel like we're going to be in this very rapid period of innovation where there's lots of stuff that we don't really know how to incorporate into our human no, and, bio. And, and, and lots, so the founder of, of, of Schwebel from uh, Neuralex, because so I asked about the privacy implications here, and he said, you know, when if I call you and leave a message on your phone, you own the copyright to that. Oh, this Neuralex thing. Let's ask about this because this is a big deal. When you have these sorts of things, how are they approaching FDA approval if they need it or B, even peer reviewed? Because like yeah, a lot they're just, of these they're things saying are you're clean. nuts without they're, any they're, well, uh, Yeah, so here's here's right, so here's the thing. So, uh yes, they're going to go for FDA, he said. Um and, and Jim, if I get anything wrong, please let me know and we'll correct it next week. Uh, uh, he said they're planning to go for FDA, but the, for the earliest stage product, they'll just go for um, anxiety. And and um, and I can see... Hello, Leo. This is your echo. Who are anxious. You're sounding very nervous. It could trigger your Fitbit to do the breathing exercise. Well, it could. It could. Well, that it could wouldn't do, be so you know, bad. Ariana Huffington comes on and tells you to go to sleep. Um, but it could it could have an impact on your medication. So, so at a consumer level, it tells you about you. It probably will not ever diagnose you. It will be a B two B to the doctor. Okay. And the doctor gets the ability. But that's to, not the only thing that's making me nervous. No, I agree. It's take that, and then what is apparently happening right now with this, which is massive cyber warfare and the sudden rise of the amoral hacker whether it's a state or a sponsored organization or an individual and this is what we're seeing in the ukraine <laughs> and you have those two together suddenly i am a little worried i have all these devices that are listening and talking to me and yep, then i yep. have all these bad guys and there seem to be there seems to be no check on these guys and i feel like we live in a we're, we're heading towards a classic kind of dystopia and they're going to know things about you. This is where we, we've discussed this many times. You know, um, I argue that you can't control knowledge. You can't control the gathering of information, but you have to control the use of it. And so does it become illegal to do a psychiatric analysis of us on this show? Well, the chat room's been doing that for years. Yes. So this is nothing new to us. <laughs> Dr. Mom has certified us long Oh, my since. God. <laughs> Wait, she has not certified me. Wait no, it is me. No, 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 no. She loves you. It's me. It's all about me and a little <laughs> bit about Jeff. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm just, I, I, got my uh, shoes. I, I mean, of course there's a solution to it. It's to not buy these devices and it's to maybe move somewhere where there's no internet. Um, but I'm just very, I feel okay, like wait, we're, wait, there's, you're missing an obvious solution. Hey, we set rules about how we can use yeah. this. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, you use the days. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Mom says it's not illegal just unethical, and that's right. Uh, and 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 it is well, the rules ethics, of use of data. Believe me, ethics have gone out the window. That's why this this growing group of amoral hackers. See what's what's. It turns out the only thing that's really prevented people from being completely malicious to one another is society and norms. 
And there, we've raised a generation, I think, of people who don't have anything to hold them back anymore. No, they feel so, so. they 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 suffer from extreme anomie and misogyny. They don't feel like a part of society. And Not the whole generation. No, but enough. Some goes within it. Yes. So, Leo, I recommend highly, highly. We don't have time for this. I don't think we're going to full detail this week. But I, I wrote a piece while while I was gone on media manipulation. Data and Society, which is a think tank in New York run by Data Boyd, released a spectacular report going exactly where you're going. Um, uh, the catalogs, the bad guys, and who it is, and how they're doing it, and why they're doing it. So it's everything from Gamer Gators to the so-called men's right movement to the alt-right to terrorists to trolls. So I read that. Then I read, and 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 you should read this, but you're going to get really paranoid. I link to it in my post. The NATO handbook on Russian information warfare. It is a script for what we're going through. I'm not saying the Russians are doing it all, but I'm saying that the techniques are, they're learning from each other. Then I read a RAND report on Russian information warfare. And you're right, Leo, these, these, these nefarious actors are out there and they will be able to exploit certain things. You don't need the whole society. You, you're, the norms of society may indeed find it repugnant. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And, and, then, and then you get in the mode of, oh my God, something bad could happen. Kill the Alexas first. Well, read the cover story in the June Wired magazine. How an entire nation became Russia's test bed for cyber war. That was a great story. Andy Greenberg. Um, this is essentially the story of what's going on in Ukraine. Yep. And Russia's, using the same techniques. The Russian state hackers have cut the electricity. In some cases, they have uh, faked election results. They have sowed fake news. They have perfected cyber war, a wide ranging variety of cyber warfare uh, techniques. And Ukraine is the test bed, A, because they're already in a war with the Ukraine. I'm sorry, Ukraine, not the Ukraine. I'm, they're already in a war with Ukraine. But B, uh, because they want to see it's an experiment to see how well these things can work. Well, now, we're the experiment, too. So let me give you a couple. Uh, well, the, it, this is in, in, for instance, in Greenberg's article, he points out that they did something in the uh, Ukraine election, which they then duplicated in our election shortly uh, right. thereafter. Right. But we're also seeing this week the Petya ransomware, which comes out of, as far as we can tell, an accounting firm in Ukraine, which was either hacked or, uh, which I think is the most likely case, or themselves or bad guys. We know that a lot of ransomware... Wasn't Rosneft a target of it? Well, that's what's interesting. A lot of ransomware is coming out of the Ukraine to fund their cyber warfare against Russia. Oh. Mm. In any event, this is a... this. Uh, it's, it seems likely that Pecha is uh, not created by an individual, but created by uh, a state-sponsored uh, group. But it's hard to say, and it's brought down some very big... Uh, yes. Like Mersk. Yes. Very Merck, right. Merck and Mersk, um, in hospitals, and this is and there's and this is a uh, wanna cry times ten, and I think this is going to be the year we look back and say, oh crap, this is when it all no. started to go downhill. And by the way, this one also takes advantage of a number of NSA discovered. Mm -hmm. So should the NSA? What's your opinion and Steve's opinion? Should the NSA? Just go ahead and reveal how they all this stuff works. They should immediately reveal all the exploits. So should the FBI. So should the CIA. Uh, because at this point, everybody has to have a chance to patch. The problem is that people don't patch. So, for instance, this Petra, if you patched in your all of your version, all of your Windows machines, if you patched them in March, you wouldn't be vulnerable to it. But people don't update them. Don't. And all it takes is one computer that hasn't been updated in a hospital, for instance, where they can't update all the computers to infect the rest of the network. And so there's a risk revealing these because as soon as it's revealed, it will be exploited. The problem is much of it has been revealed. This is a this is a mess. Well, and this is it's one thing to tell people to patch. It's another thing to talk about how how to implement patches. And I was actually at an industrial IoT event um, for Honeywell and the, to their plants that refine oil and make drugs and all these other things. And there was a conversation about patching because all of these people realize it's a big deal, but they're all, they're like, if I patch something, a machine on my line, 
and I do it without the vendors say so, I void my warranty. I can also break things further down the line by having other partners stuff go down because it'll suddenly not work with other equipment on the line or sensors. And for them, it's not just for up until about now, their risk analysis has always been, well, I can't patch because I can't afford the potential downtime without support from my vendors, you know, and now they're like, do I take the downtime? Do I run the risk of having downtime because of Petra? Or do I run the risk of downtime because of patches? So it's it's not as simple in every situation as saying, patch your crap. Yeah, I know there are companies that are stockpiling Bitcoin so that when they do get bit, they have something to pay the ransom with. Now, I have Jesus. to point out that Petra, at least the main variant of Petra, in order to pay the ransom... You had to use an email address to a German email company, and then the hacker would then send you the thing. The German email company closed that account. So pay all you want. You're never going to get unencrypted. So uh, I don't know, Stacey, you tell me, out of business or patch your machines? Well, in, I mean, like, but literally up until probably last year, for a lot of companies, their risk analysis was very different. Yeah, right? Sony's so, is famous. Sony's famous for that. So, see, Sony said, "Oh, yeah, it's too expensive. We understand. We're just going to absorb the." And and I have a feeling that they might change their tune after what happened. And then the next thing is not all of these places like hospitals. I talked to hospital CISOs, and most hospitals one HIPAA requires you have some sort of IT administrator. I know. They can't do it. No, I know they can't do it. They're IT administrators, like a nurse. Well, and they, in even, like small rural even then, places. if they update, yeah. they have to recertify. And so um, they can't just update all the time. So there's that. And mess. then there's also equipment is still being built and specced out for like 15 years. Right. I, I, oh, it's, it's really scary. I mean, like, no, no, it's just, there's no obvious answer to this. That's why I'm feeling so dystopian today. But we can do it. Okay. I know that I am super positive, but I, it's Stacy the Riveter. <laughs> but Stacy, Here's the, we have I'm to. usually the optimist. Here's the problem. You can solve the technical problems. You can't solve the psych psychological problems. So you can, and this is what was exciting about the industrial thing. And this is where I think it gets really interesting. So their mindset is very different than the IT world. I talked to this guy and he, he was like, if your guys on the factory floor see a faulty ladder, they know what to do. But do they know what to do in the case of, good. you know, in, in their case, it was a US, uh, empty USB like drive. That. We have to but, train people. I agree. That's good. No, but I'm talking about different psychology. Stop. Well, and, and I know that, you know, yes, people are always going to be conned and people are always your weakest link. But there are actually, once you recognize that and start thinking that you can train against it, and that you can build kind of some sort of wall around people, and I don't mean an actual wall or even a software wall, but... Right now, we think about cybersecurity and IT vulnerabilities almost entirely as technical. And we need to be thinking of them as humans. And well, you see yes. Google doing this a little bit. but And that's one narrow slice of it. Uh, but remember that these attacks also attack the power grid. They also distribute fake but, news. They also attack election results. So it's more than just say, train the the worker to understand right. what to do this is the problem yes. is that these state actors are willing to act in a scale unprecedented here's an article from bleeping computer quoting a trend micro story uh this is a website uh and there are a number of these they're f underground fake news marketplaces this one's in russian mm -hmm. and at these websites customers can purchase services ranging from discrediting journalists to promoting street protests from stuffing online polls to ma manipulating a decisive course of action, such as election, for a mere $400,000, which is nothing to a country, let alone, I mean, a billion, like, a billion, George Soros could do this. You can completely undermine an election. So please allow me to read from the NATO, from a, a Russian paper quoted in the NATO handbook. 
quote, the main aim of information psychological conflict is regime change by the means of influence on mass consciousness of the population, directing people so that the population of the victim country is induced to support the aggressor acting against its own interests. Does that sound familiar? Bingo. Uh, it says here, too, another paper says... Information has become the same kind of weapon as a missile, a bomb, and so on. But it allows you to use a very small amount of energy or matter to begin monitor and control processes whose matter and energy parameters are many orders of magnitude larger. So that's kind of my point, which is, yes, it's, yes. it's, it's attacking a hospital with malware and ransomware, but it's also a lot of other activities. And, yes. in, and if you look at the Ukraine, read this article. I, I know you both did. I'm saying to the audience, read this article in the uh, cover story of Wired because it's kind of ch – not this one, the cover story of Wired uh, by Greenberg. Um, it's kind of – well, it's chilling. Uh, it ch it's all about how – All this Russian stuff is chilling, yes. Yeah, Andy Greenberg. And so you have a state actor, and there's probably more than one, but we can at least pinpoint Russia, that has the will and the means to – destroy a country in this case ukraine uh and in and and frankly i don't even i think they're hold, holding back i think they're pulling their punches because a lot of this is just a test tube for something they don't want to they don't want to reveal all everything they can do because what they're really interested in is is making sure all these weapons work and at some point i suspect uh they will apply these for real on mass and we are very we are completely unprepared for this yeah, in the end, Furthermore, we have an administration that is terrified of uh, making its own election, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, suspect, and yes. so they don't want to. They don't want to confront this. Well, this whole this whole fake news house of mirrors. One last quote. At the highest level, I say in my post, they attack truth. Quote, multiple untruths, not necessarily consistent, are in part designed to undermine trust in the existence of objective truth, says Nathan. Can I say we knew this was happening six months ago? Yes, we did. We knew yes, this we was happening. Everybody knew this was happening. The Obama administration knew it was happening, and they were caught between a rock and a hard place because they didn't want to look like they were influencing the election. So they didn't really do anything even though we knew it was happening. So are the fundamental beliefs in truth, democracy, the American way, are being undermined? And so, Stacey, that's my only point about psychology, that even if you if you make everybody clean about how to deal with USB drives, they go home and watch the news or the Twitter feed of leaders or whatever, or, or, or bots um, influencing media. The other thing about the, the, the data and society showed is how something starts in 8chan and bubbles up to Infowars and bubbles up to Breitbart and bubbles up to Fox News. And then CNN finally says, oh, well, everybody's talking about it, so we have to cover this. And the bad guys have won in setting the agenda. The Rand Report says the bad guys have a huge advantage because it's a lot faster to make up stuff than it is to report stuff. So they set the agenda. They get out there faster, so they get more volume. That same fear that you have that you're talking about on the fake news front, and I'm not saying that it's not, it, it is a legitimate concern, but, and it's faster now, but I don't think it's different. We've had that same, I mean, in a sense, that's how we've gotten to great acceptance of like gay marriage, for example, or even civil rights. Although uh, apparently a lot of people apparently aren't really big on that. But these sorts of things happen both for positive and for negative things. And right now we're very focused on this because it's been used to detract a lot. And I think the key isn't to say, holy cow, we're living in a dystopia. It's to say, holy cow, this is happening. We have made the world better before. Let's change the conversation and do that again. Because that's, we basically, maybe we don't use the tool of fake news if we can, but I, I guess that's that's what I'm. Can can, can I vote for you on. for Senate, please? I would like I've considered running for office. Oh, I don't I think I would win. So fast. Yeah. You'd be but, great. I mean, well, I but you I don't to, know if I'd want to do it you might for public to, service you reasons. Might have to leave Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it would be more and more compelling no, to start the conversation in Texas. That's, that's yeah. exactly right. I agree. And I, meanwhile, I don't know. Gooch, here's the good news. Google's YouTube Party app is available now without an invitation. <laughs> so Everything's fine. Pay no attention to those negative nannies on that Twig show. Have a party with uptime.
the YouTube social viewing app. I feel like that's this show is schizophrenic in this regard. It is. Yeah, we were like, ooh, Echo Show, Echo I Show. Know. Oh, we're all gonna die. Oh, oh Echo Show. So, but that's but you know what? This is the world we're in, and this and this network, not just this show, but this whole network, kind of is. It, that's what this sh network has become about. Somehow, a uh, twit has become about technology. At first, it was, isn't it great? Look how it's changing the world for the better. Then it was like, oh crap. <laughs> well, here's, here's, here's something actually that's cool for using technology for transparency in changing the world, possibly for the better. Um, iOS 11, if you're playing with the beta versions, they, they're, it, it's showing you when apps are using your location. Yeah, well, it's done that it for a while. You, no, no, it's done Oh, it that. does? I don't have an iPhone, so I didn't Yeah, it, in fact, I, Apple's been really... At least Apple pays lip service, and I would say they're probably sincere in it and very good about privacy. And for a long time, when an application uses your location, it will periodically, iOS will say, hey, just so you know, Facebook's been using your uh, location information. Do you want it to continue to do so? Now, most people are going to say yes because there's a benefit to that. But it's but if we're an app you know, that you didn't think needed that, you know, Snapchat now will show you where your friends are at all times. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. Yeah. That was the, that was the famous Gawker, the Gawker stalker map, right? Right. Uh, or or Uber's God mode, right? God view. God view. Well, in that case, it was just Uber knowing where it you wasn't are. your friends. It was just Uber. Yeah. Uh, well, this says it's it's actively using your location, is what the bar says. Yeah. So not just when it's using they may, it. Like, do they? May, I have okay. to look. I don't have my iOS 11 uh, device here, but it, it they may now give you a list of apps that are actively using it right now. But they've always warned you, and there is a setting that's it, you can retract permissions. Right. So uh, I have to say, uh, my my here's my. It's pretty clear that Apple would be a better choice if you're worried about security and privacy. Be it is have, recommended for journalists. Yeah, it'd be better to have an iPhone. Not. But I also think it's not immediately, It's what we don't know is, it's not perfect either. We know there are hacks and exploits. We also know that Apple has a lot of the information that, you know, Apple doesn't play this up, but they can see everything if, if they were required to submit it, for instance, by a government on your iCloud. They can see the content of your messages. So... I mean, I don't. I think. I think there's a major risk in carrying a smartphone of any brand. Yeah, but but again, then a risk of what happening to this is where the harm discussion has to occur. No, and I'm not worried about companies, and I'm not worried about Google or Facebook at this point. I'm worried about governments. But even then, why are they going to target Joe Schmo with a with a Android phone on the street? Well, that's a, that's just a version, of Jeff, of the. If you're not doing anything wrong, why would you care? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't think. No, I think it's 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 a, it's a no. It's this is risk management. If you if you are uh, a politician, you have a high risk. If you're a bus driver, what's your risk? Not so, that the bus driver so, is an important person. So keep but, your head down, and everything will be fine. But whatever you do, don't appear on a podcast about. Uh, yeah, that's privacy. what people tell women. They're like, just keep yeah, your just head down up. and don't don't yeah. no, upset no, people, I, and you'll yeah, be fine. I'm I'm, I'm I'm digging myself a hole here, which I don't think I. Should. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm like, no, no, no. I, 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 get, I get what it sounds like, but I'm trying to say something different. I think that we have to, because because here's the risk. We could damn near shut down the whole internet because all the bad things that could happen. Companies and governments go through risk management. So will individuals need to go through some level of risk management um, as they make decisions about who to share what with and why and what could happen. And the risks vary. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, yes. And I think... And that's true. And I think people don't understand those trade-offs as well as they should. But I also think they're driven by uh, – they're, they're, they don't have the same information that a government or a more sophisticated true. person – like that's why I'm pro-transparency. Agree. Agree. And I also agree with you very much, Stacey, that, that, that we need a conversation and we should be talking about this in a positive way to say, well, what can we, can we do about it? And we will figure it out. There's going to be some damage between and some bad lessons between here and there. By the way, Stacey, I think you're right. I think there is, in fact, a new feature in iOS 11, this blue bar. That's what you were talking about? Uh-huh. It says so this is using that. your application or using your location right now. Okay. But I'm I'm always willing to be wrong on Apple stuff because I do not use it you day to day. Use it. So, yeah. like, so the, uh, Apple has done all the things I mentioned, but now they're going to put a blue status bar when an app is using your location while running in the background. Which is kind of cool because then you can be like, 
wait, why, why is this? And maybe you'll start deleting more apps. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it'd certainly be nice to know if, you know, uh, an app that doesn't, for any obvious reason, need to know where you are does that. Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting use of Twitter. Petya Payments. Somebody set up a Twitter bot that watches payments to the Bitcoin account tied to the Petya malware. Jeez. The depressing thing is... Transparency! depressing thing, it's only received 45 payments totaling $10,000 so far. So why is that depressing? Because it's causing a, untold millions of dollars, if not billions oh, of dollars, right. in damage, and the and the hackers who and created no one's it are profiting. making and they're not making any money. But this happened so last time. This happened with WannaCry as well. If you well, store good, your valuable data not on your machines, but at AWS or at Google, how much at risk? You, you know, and, and you had and you had to rebuild everybody's PC. But if you had if you had a discipline about storing the data off those machines and elsewhere, how much at risk are you for an attack like this? Well, your service providers could become the risk vector. Well, like, let's say uh, you know you use Carbonite, or I have a I have a Synology NAS, and I back up everything separately there. And blah. I mean, the problem is that Petya and others uh, don't merely delete your data or encrypt your data; they also bring your whole network to its knee. It can't you can't continue to use the computers. So it's not the individual machines; it's the whole network. It's the whole network, and that's okay. why Maersk. That's I mean, Maersk is the is a massive Danish uh, container <laughs> shipping company. Yeah, uh, they. Is they literally shut down their operations all over the world because their terminals were infected and they could not do anything. Now I'm sure they have I'm sure backups galore, but they I mean that this is a this has been three or four days now. This is can you imagine? And by the way, this echoes not just to the company Maersk, but all the companies who are waiting for deliveries from Maersk containers and all the yep, companies yep. that use, you know, Maersk. For all those just-in-time supply chains are going to be. Yeah. Ah. yeah. This is why the Nintendo Switch is hard to get. No. It, well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, and it, all of this for $10,000. But it is, in a sense, that's, I mean, if if they're doing it for profit, this shows that it's a crappy profit maker. Yay. If you're doing it, though, to just piss people yeah. off and show how stupid everyone right. is, which is kind of. I'm of the opinion now that most of the, the WannaCry and Petya were government mm -hmm. sponsored yeah, state hacking. And that the goal Economic is, motivation is a lot easier to deal the, with. The goal is disruption, not Bitcoin. Yeah. And the Bitcoin is just, uh, you know, a MacGuffin. However, I have no evidence for that, but. Uh, these are really these are very well written um, uh, tools. I mean, they're they're quite impressive in their in their scope. They look a lot like the tools written by state sponsored hacking. Uh, we think WannaCry was North Korea. Mm -hmm. And we don't know. I would guess this one's Russia because it came out of the Ukraine. Out of Ukraine, I keep saying the Ukraine. Hey, you were at VidCon, Jeff. We're going to wrap it up. We've been yes. going on for a long time, but I just wanted to. It looked like uh, another you last year. You came back all energized. Yeah, and I am again. It's it's such a good conference, uh, and 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 the the brothers, the Green brothers, are just the best. Uh, I got to spend a little time with them, and uh, they they just put on a culture that that matters. So there was a lot of discussion about politics. Um, uh, the YouTube uh, keynote, which is usually a big deal. This time, Susan Wojcicki was interviewed on stage, and there are a few things to reveal there. Um, Facebook was much more of a presence than before. Um, straight out sponsor and doing a lot of things, and they care about video, and Fiji Simo was interviewed yet again on stage. Uh, Jack Conti uh, did some proper victory laps for how well um, Patreon is doing. Um, talked with Hank Green on stage. Uh, so Jack. yeah, it's uh, good for it's, Jack. Uh, Jack's the greatest. They're so just, glad uh, I, finally, well. I finally got to meet Natalie and tell her I'm a fan. Oh man, I love. They've been. We've had them play, perform for us yeah. in the studio because they're they're from the area. Yeah, they're just and they're just great people. They're just, they're yeah, just, Pomplamus was the was the band. Pomplamus, yeah. But then yeah. Jack realized how hard it was to make money as a YouTube sensation. He created Patreon to sp support and foster uh, creators, and it's been a huge success. And the great thing about Jack's startup versus other kinds of startups is he did it to solve a problem. He did it his to own, solve a for his creator. Own, yes. His own problem and that, that of fellow edge. creators. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, VidCon was great. And and uh, hats off to them. Uh, another good program. I think I think there was 
28,000 people this, this year or something like that. Did Amazing. you go to the um, Try Guys Evolution of Viral Video show? No, I didn't get to. Well, you can watch it on YouTube. Yes. It's actually pretty funny. I'll just play a little bit, but it's, it's kind of all the biggest viral videos... Uh, over the last uh, 20 years, starting with, it's really fun. Starting with the uh, the dancing baby, but this is very common. Look at this. This is like a rock show. <laughs> YouTube stars will do anything for yes. views, right? I thought this was this is pretty funny. I watched it for a while. But listen to the crowd roar. This is like a rock show. Familiarity, yeah. This is it's their childhood, man. And yeah. the other thing that's showing up is when you see the <laughs> audience, every single person in the audience is videoing this on their camera phone as if I don't know what, they're gonna create their own YouTube. People watch this. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> This is actually pretty impressive. <laughs> I'll show this to my daughter so she can see what she missed. Before. Well, yeah, I think you'd yeah. have to be like, this is probably for the late 20-somethings. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I certainly recognize all of it. but uh, Although, I will say my daughter knew about VidCon, and she was very jealous, Jeff, that you were there. <laughs> what is the age group? What is the age group at VidCon? It feels like it's uh, predominantly teenage girls. It is predominantly teenage girls. My daughter is 20. She still enjoys it. The problem was she they need a way to get like college age people together. But I'd say it goes from listen, there were 10 year olds who want to be there. I'd say it goes from teenage, 13, 14, up through about 24. And this screaming audience though is screaming for uh, videos that were. <laughs> That were big, uh, like 10, 15 years ago. So they've got to. I, I ran into one couple older than I am. That's all. They said, yeah, we started coming three years ago because we brought our kid, but the kid doesn't come anymore, but we do. Isn't that funny? There's, um. I like turtles! You know, and then I look at uh, what Apple did with uh, Planet of the Apps, which is the most, I think, critics agree, and you must have to put on your TV critic hat once again, Jeff Jarvis, the yes. most god-awful television show ever created. Unfortunately, there are nine more still to come. And I look at Facebook, say, we're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, fiction and nonfiction, short form and long form. I look at what the hundreds of millions YouTube has spent. Yep. And they all want to be Netflix. They all want to be Amazon. Mm -hmm. Apple has hired some Sony. But that's uh, not the power of well. So, so I, 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 among others, urged the industry track to do one of those great panels they used to do at Web 2.0, where they have a panel of teenagers just talking about their media. And so they have. That's a great teams. idea, just to know what it, the it, young. It's young a great. Yeah. It's always, always a good panel. Always fascinating. And if you're willing to listen to them enough and shut up as adults, um, what was interesting was they all YouTube, 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 YouTube. Um, but uh, not so much Snapchat, Netflix, and Amazon. Didn't YouTube do learn much. though that it was a mistake to put a lot of, to like make PewDiePie be a Hollywood style celebrity? That these that these YouTube videos succeed because of their kind of underground nature. Yes, and, I think so. Yes, yes. And, and, and yet so now this, you this see Apple and Facebook going down that same path. I think it's. I don't. I think they don't understand. They're trying to recreate mass media. And listen, if you right. get a hit in mass media, it's a great business thing. But the risk is high. You get a the, viral the hit on YouTube. The there's tail. nothing. <laughs> What's so great about walking around VidCon is you're walking around the, the the first floor, which is the fan floor, in the expo, and some you know geeky. 15 year old comes walking along you have no idea who that is and suddenly that person is just mobbed by screaming people the way i, told, I explained to my daughter what it was like for me I, I go to a dld conference in munich every year when it's the same time as the german oscars and it's in the same hotel and so i see all these people who are wildly famous in germany and i have no effing idea who they are that's what it is for me at vidcon Right, and there's yeah. all these people who are stars complete stars to a to a small but rabid group of people and by the way leo the amount of recognition I get on the floor of VidCon because of this show and because of your network and the adoration to you and the adoration to the Twit Network is is wonderful. Oh, I should go people, next people time. I, I could use right some now. adoration. 
You should go. You send, <laughs> send me. I'll bring my daughter. Well, yeah, I, so do you, you're, is, mom of the year. Your daughter would love to go, wouldn't she? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Well, why don't, we, why don't we do a panel next year? Why don't we do a panel next year that says, God damn it, podcasts were not invented yesterday. And go to some oh, of the Did you see the revenue growth in podcasts? Did you see that stat? I think I tweeted it. I, I was feel like, like what? I no. feel like um, old media when I go to places like that. I don't get it at all. I just feel old. Well, I was going to say, are you sure you don't just feel old? <laughs> Let's talk about the revenue growth in podcasts. Uh, this was podcast breakthrough year. Whoa. Podcast breakthrough year. I don't know. Where did you find that stat? Uh, I would like to see that stat. Let me find it. Revenue like growth for podcasting. Oh, here's the IAB study. Pod Maybe it was IAB. I don't like the IAB, by the way, because they're trying to impose... Uh, this is the IAB revenue Old study. media rules yes, on new media advertising. We... Have to advertisers all many advertisers now come to us trying to get a IAB generated contract, and we have to explain to them, no, that's not how we do business. That's how the IAB thinks we should do business. Yes, this is an IAB study. Oh, and it was actually from June of last year. Yeah. So let's see if their predictions Growth measured up. Forecast for this year: two hundred twenty million dollars. That doesn't seem like much given the billions that are spent in mainstream media. Yeah, it, this was purely like, hey, podcasts, you can. Make yeah. money. I don't know where they get their numbers. I, I don't know. You know, we finally realized, oh, we, we really need to become members. It's very expensive to become a member of the IAB. No normal podcaster can become a member, right? What was it, $50,000? And 10000 oh. and a fraction of your, did they did they want a percentage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they want a percentage of our revenue as well? No, that's if you get bigger. That's if you get bigger. <laughs> but we did, but we decided, Lisa to her credit, decided we, but we need to be heard with these, with this group. So she participated in uh, some yes. feedback to them in this, in this survey. Joined, oh, she, you participated in this advertising revenue study. So this includes our numbers. Yes. Well, no wonder those numbers are so good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I started my show in 2016. So clearly yeah, there you clearly are adding to this uh, big pile of, uh, of dollars. I need to go to my other podcast boyfriend in about five minutes. You have another oh, podcast boyfriend? he has a better date. He has Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, that guy. Well, let's do our picks of the week after this word from Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage is the future of mortgage lending. They were, uh, you know, the Rocket Mortgage realized, Quicken Loans realized that the mortgage experience wasn't keeping up with the times. It was old-fashioned. So they created a product just for you and me, the modern internet user. You could do the whole thing online. They created partnerships with financial institutions, so you don't even have to go get your paperwork. You can submit it with a touch of a finger. And because it's all computerized, they can, they can based on your income, your assets, your credit, analyze all the home loan options for you in seconds and find the run that's just right for you. So it literally, the turnaround on a loan approval is minutes. Minutes! I compare that to what I do. At least and I, when we bought our house three years ago, it took more than a month. This is so much better. Rocket Mortgage. By Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. RocketMortgage.com slash twig. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS Consumer Access.org number 3030 from Quicken Loans. RocketMortgage.com slash twig. And we thank them for making this show possible. Jeff Jarvis, give us a number, then I'll let you go to talk to that Neil deGrasse Tyson guy. Yeah, him. Ha. Um, so my number is 180. Uh, at VidCon, uh, YouTube announced the support of a new format of uh, VR 180, which is basically half of VR. And they're going to have some new cameras coming out, uh, which are more stereoscopic in the old sense of two lenses. And that's why I wondered whether I, when I saw all about Android, I wondered about the two two cameras on the, on the back of the um, um the Note 5, not the Note 5, the whatever. What's the new one? Um, uh, anyway. The Pixel XL? No, no, the... Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no, the... The, 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 the OnePlus 5. <laughs> OnePlus 5, thank you. And, um, uh, but I've, I've long said that 360 doesn't make as much sense as 180 because 180 is like, you know, watching a stage or watching a show or watching tennis. You know, you can look back and forth and, and put your attention in multiple places without having to absolutely turn around and not face who you're talking to, which is kind of ridiculous. Right, um, and and so I think the 180 for it's it's I think this whole notion of 360 VR is starting to be 
brought down to reality, first by AR, first by what Facebook did at F8, and then Google followed, saying, eh, you know, everybody's got a camera, we can add AR to that. That's a lot easier than all this stuff on your face. And same with 180. Yeah, we can show you something and you can move around in it, but you don't have to do this whole immersive thing and turn around and 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 and, and get on a swivel chair in life. So I found that that interesting. That and one other number from Susan Wojcicki's talk is that they now serve 1.5 billion logged in viewers oh. on YouTube every month. I and, saw that and, number. And the world thought they were fools to buy it. Oh. Um, on I guess it's hard to believe. On average. Our viewers spend over an hour a day watching YouTube on mobile devices alone. One hour a day. Wow. That's just average. That's incredible to me. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how that's true. But I but did they, make, I, when I was uh, on my vacation, I had one of those Gear 360 cameras, and I made a bunch of 360-degree videos. This is a tour of the Galapagos. You're on the Zodiac boat with me. Yeah, I watched this one. This was fun. So I do think that there, I mean, I agree with you that 360, that's me. Uh, 360, you know, has some uh, unique challenges, but for experiential, yes, I mean, this is pretty for, amazing that you can, you but know, for a concert, a show, a oh, talk 180 show, is plenty. Other yeah. things, yeah. 180 is going to be plenty. Yeah, for for seeing what you see, with just giving you some more choice, 180 is going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, and so I think it's a very smart kind of down to earth way to look at this. So those are my numbers. Very good, Jeff. Go speak to your buddy. I'm going to go and see my new friend. All right. Bye, Jeff. Good to be friend. back. I'm so just glad remember, I missed the show. I miss you guys. <laughs> we love you, Jeff. Are started. you going to be here next week? Yes, yes, yes. See you then. See you then. Bye. Stacey, your pick of the week. I think we should both pick the Amazon uh, home show. I'm picking the show because... This is pretty it's... impressive. Yeah, well, it's fun. I'm going to... Talk to me next week after I've used it and people have called me and I'll see. I like... Look, first of all, I like the, the screens on it are really pretty, these images. It's like a, um, you know, I, what was that? Chumby. Oh, it is like Chumby. So wait, I want to do something because I pulled in a an image from WhatsApp to this thing. Um, I pulled in an image that was taken on my camera phone. And so, and it didn't go all the way across. So I actually wanted to pull in a new image because I thought it was weird. And if I wanted to use it as a camera, it was not going to work well. So, oh, interesting. So you are able to take images from the, the Echo and put yes. it on other things. How do you how do you do a screenshot? Is there there's you do it by voice? And I did not find a screenshot. I guess yeah. you try screenshotting. I, so now Sony I'm and Chumby all tried this, but this is a this is qual qualitatively a different device. I mean, this is kind of amazing. Well, I, there's things you can do. I mean, like being able to look at your security camera. And I haven't yeah. done the August. I haven't done the skill yet, but I could be able to show you from this right now outside my door from my doorbell. It's kind of amazing. Right here. Um, so that's pretty cool. We'll review not... it in more detail on a Saturday on the new screensavers, and probably next week Stacy and I will both have things to say. I, I just feel like this, I, the reason I want to get keep the other one, maybe get more, is I want to have one in the kitchen for sure. Oh, look, we're a little late. Tech News Today, uh, it's 12 minutes late. So, And, and you know who told me yes. that? My Amazon show. Armpit tattoos go. popular on Instagram? No, I hope not. Okay, whenever I see things like popular on Instagram, I'm just like, nope, <laughs> shut it down. Uh, I Too also think, though, I think this would be nice on my bedside table. I think you Maybe should wait not. For that. Uh, show kid videos. Netflix has new interactive kid videos, by the way, where you could choose how it ends, how it, what's next. Okay, so it's showing me these screens, and on some of them, like the Nut Job, which is on Amazon Prime, yeah. it's allowing me to play it. Can you? That's neat. Okay. So you can't so, play shows on there. I'm not sure I'd want to do that, but now. you could. Let's just see. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. Dun dun dun. Hey, uh, I don't know what's happening with Danny Sullivan, but it sounds like he's retiring from Search Engine Land. <gasps> he posted a video. Did you did you see this? He posted. Uh, no, when did this happen? Post, he posted on Facebook. Uh, a couple of days ago, my new role as advisor for his company. In other words, he's stepping back as a, he was in charge of content at uh, Third Door Media. Now he's just an advisor. And I noticed a lot of people uh, saying, congratulations, including Walt Mossberg, congratulations on retiring. So, Danny, well, if you're yeah. retired, I know a podcast that would love to have you stop by once in a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was I was wondering if you were telling me this because you're like, so Stacy, we're gonna have to let you go. Never. Danny's now available. And Never. I'm like, oh, I understand. Never. Danny's really good. <laughs> Never would let you go. You're the you're the heart and soul of this operation. I thank you so much for being here. You'll find Stacy at Stacy on IOT. Uh, dot com and iotpodcast.com. Stacy on IoT is her blog where she covers the Internet of Things, and she does that great podcast with Kevin Toffel. And that's a, you can get them at both at Stacy on iot.com at Giga Stacy on Twitter. Thank you, Stacy. Go have dinner. Yes. And some queso. <laughs> You've earned some queso. Ooh, I don't care how you make it, even with Rotel and Velveeta. Hey, if you try it, you will not. It's it's a salt bomb, but it's. it's that's why I'm not trying it because I know I will never stop eating it. Jeff right. Jarvis is a professor of journalism at the City University of New York, the, the author of many books, including Public Parts, What Would Google Do, Gutenberg the Geek, Geeks Bearing Gifts, and uh, he blogs at buzzmachine.com. Both of them make this show what it is. Thank you for being here, and thank you all for watching. We do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern Time, 20.30 UTC. You can watch it live on our website, twit.tv, or youtube.com slash twit, or ustream.tv slash twit, or twitch.tv slash twit. Uh, you can chat in the chat room. You can listen live on TuneIn uh, or a variety of other uh, radio program uh, apps. Uh, if you join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv, sometimes we mention you and say hi. A lot of times we just talk at you. Uh, but if you don't want to be here in person, by all means, join us on demand. All of our shows available at twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash twig. Or subscribe. We want to be part of your podcast life. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next week on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.